Welcome back to another episode on the Wild of Staining podcast, the podcast for the edification of the abstinent Christian. Listen, if you're an OG or a newbie joining us, I want to make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and hit that bell notification so you never miss when we go live for an interview. If you want to take us on the road with you when you're out and about and, you know, listen to us in your ear or in your car, make sure you tap in on all streaming platforms. Now, if you've been losing sleep, really trying to figure out how can I uh, uh, support this podcast financially? Baby, you're not going to lose no more sleep because I got the answer for you. OK, you can now support this podcast financially by becoming a channel member or you can bless us with some super chats in the live chat or in the replay video in the comment section. So go ahead and be a blessing. Okay. Amen. Amen. I do have a disclaimer for you guys. Listen, so we don't get kicked out or banned or flagged in these on these platforms. We're going to be using some code words, right? So when we say engaging in the P, I mean, excuse me, engaging in the M, see code words, engaging in the M, that's going to mean masturbating. If we talk about pornography, we'll say the P. If we're talking about sex, we're going to say having relations, okay? So I need y'all just to keep up and follow along. I'm your host for today, Shakia, and I want to ask you a question. Have you you ever thought, why have I been absent this long? Okay, just just me. Okay, no, no. Okay, but listen, if you ask that question, I don't want you to ask it anymore. Don't think it anymore, because tonight I'm going to be discussing that with my guest. So, tribe, wherever you are, I want you to put your hands together and welcome our guest, Mr. Latiris R. Whitfield. Hello. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Okay, now fix your face now, Latiris. Oh, well, no, I was about to send this link and put it on my community tab. I want to see more people on this live. Okay, man. So send it to the people. Um, Latiris looking like we done held him hostage. Like he didn't know about this interview. But he done, he, well, because the face when you came up, it was just real like, I didn't oh. even know I was about to be up here. But Latiris is sharing it out. So we appreciate him for tapping it, you know, having the people tap in. And then we're going to get in Latiris business. If you're in the uh, chat, just say, Latiris, we're ready to get in your business. We don't, want, we don't want him to keep it cute. We want him to, you know, I was going to say get a little raw, but I'm nervous saying that to Latiris. Yeah, you so, should be. Yeah, I don't want to say get raw, but we, we just want him to keep it real. We just want Latiris to keep it real. I'm excited to have what somebody said, Latiris in the hot seat, right? Because usually... <laughs> Usually other people are in the hot seat. He's going to tell you, you know, what that looks like. But tonight we got Latiris in the hot seat. So I'm going to ask all the questions that I can and try to just extract some information. Yes, I want him to speak to y'all, but I want to get in Latiris' business a little a little bit too. Um, so Latiris, you ready to tell the people who you are um, and all the great things that you are doing? Do I need to say, can I just say Latiris or do I need to say Latiris or Whitfield every time? Just Latiris. You sure? No, go ahead. The terrorists always feel. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you really wanted. Uh, uh-uh. That's too much. I say Mr. Whitfield. I like to say, I say hello, Mr. Whitfield. Yeah, put some respect on my name. Respect oh. your elders, Shakia. Respect your elders. Okay, Latiris, because I was going to say, any other time, you don't be saying nothing about no elder. Yeah, he don't I'm be saying elder. nothing about no elder. Now he the I'm elder. elder. I'm your elder. Respect okay. Elder. Keep that yeah. energy. No okay, Whit- Mr. <laughs> Mr. Latiris R. Whitfield, tell the people who you are if they don't know. I'm the Terrace R. Whitfield, the host of the wildly popular Dear Future Wifey podcast. Um, and so the Dear Future Wifey podcast is my personal journey as I discover, uncover, and recover love. So we have transparent, vulnerable conversations, all things around love, married people, single people, people that have been divorced, and even people who don't even desire to be married. We just talk about all those topics around love. Yeah. Uh-huh. I feel like that last one. <laughs> No, you know, that's not shade you. I'm saying this people. Okay. That- I didn't say me. <laughs> I didn't say shading me. So you could just said shading people that have no desire. I'm Why just did- saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, we had some conversations before. We so, have had some conversations before, Latir. So I'm just saying there are a, a group of people who don't even desire marriage at all. Okay, but I have some new desires. So I'm I'm not really in that box anymore. Okay, you're so good. you've been delivered. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so yes, Latiris um interviews an array of people and usually they're in the hot seat, but tonight Latiris is gonna be in the hot seat. Mm-hmm. So before it heats up, right, and the seats just gets on fire and consumes you, I want to play a little game with you. Are you right. open to play a little game? Yep. Okay. So the game is called Fib, and basically it's just gonna be fill in the blank, right? So mm-hmm. I'm gonna read a sentence and then I just want you to fill in the blank with what comes to mind. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> One word that describes my abstinence journey is frustrating. Okay. All right. Just right out the gate. Just <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, got to be prepared for everything. Everything can't be positive, right? Every guess. Oh, we you know. I'm scared to ask the next one. The color that describes my abstinence journey is red. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a stop sign. I always saying stop anytime you start. <laughs> you, know, you know, those boundaries start beginning to be compromised. It's red. Stop. <laughs> Okay, as long as you didn't say black. I, I just knew you said frustrating. It was going to be black. Okay, gray, right? Okay, yeah. red. A whole bunch of stopping. Stopping. Yeah. The length of time I thought I would be abstinent is? One year. Okay, that one year. Yeah. Everybody keep having that one year. Okay. Uh, people always say one year. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's interesting because you kind of think that, especially when you're marriage-minded, then you say that, oh, I'm going to just be abstinent for a year and I'm going to meet my uh, significant other and we'll be able to do life together. No mm-hmm. one ever sits around. Well, to my understanding, I don't know people. I will hear people that's been abstinent for 10, 15, 20 yeah. years. They just never saw that coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, if I could have a superpower to help me abstain, it would be? Uh, to help me abstain. A superpower. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I would have to be blind. <laughs> <laughs> Till I can't see nothing. I ain't tempted by nothing. I can't do nothing. Oh. Power not to see. <laughs> fine women. I just get blind. When you find, I can't see. Can't even fine, see. I'm fine. There if we go. Fine, if you find, I'm blind. You say I can't even see. I don't even know. <laughs> okay, that y'all are hilarious. Uh, my biggest struggle with abstinence has been the weight. Mm. The weight W A I T or the weight W E I G H T? Both. Mm. Come on. Yeah. Okay. The biggest benefit I have received from abstaining has been discipline. Amen. Absolutely. Especially yeah. for a man. Amen. Yeah. Something I wish someone would have told me about abstaining is that, that I could possibly be abstinent at the age of 45. Mm. Like you, when you think of abstinence, when I thought of abstinence, that's a, that's a young person. That's a teenage goal. Yeah. You know, you, you're, we're taught that. First of all, men, we're not taught that at all pretty much growing up, but it sounds like something that you learn as teenagers, not something that you are doing as a grown man. That's yeah. just, somebody should have, I don't even know who would have taught it, but somebody who should have sat down and said, there's the possibility at the age of 30, at the age of 40, mm-hmm. at the age of 50, you can be abstinent and this is what that looks like. Yeah. But I think we have a lot of framework around that. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Amen. Um, and then I do want you to exp- uh, expound upon this a little bit. You don't have to have it like short and sweet like the other ones. The story behind my why is. So what is your why regarding um, living an abstinence lifestyle or pursuing yeah. to live an abstinence lifestyle? God told me that I'll never be faithful to my wife unless I first become faithful to him. And so God told me that before I got married, uh, when I got married at the age of 28, and I was like, ah, yeah, that sounds nice and cute. And the woman that I was dating at the time who later became my wife, we had our on again, off again, abstinence journey with each other, wanting to wait till marriage to have sex, but we had our slip ups. I wouldn't call it slip up, intentional moments that we, mm you know, engaged. And so, uh, but I realized that because I wasn't disciplined in that area, when things weren't going the way that I had planned in my marriage, I hadn't worked that muscle of discipline that Mm -hmm. I went outside for what I should have gone inside for. And inside doesn't necessarily mean within my marriage, but it can be inside that holies of holies with God and let God fill me up in those moments of brokenness. Amen. All yeah. right. I mean, I thought that was gonna be the little that's supposed to be the little appetizer, right? You don't get started getting into the meat. I'm getting full already. We in here now. Right. That's supposed to be a little nibble then, but yeah, yeah we, we yeah. sitting up in the meat. All right. So let's really get to the nitty-gritty um and start this discussion. So the first thing I want to ask you is what is your definition of abstaining long? Abstaining long is when for me personally is when it gets past the the perceived timeline of marriage. And so what happens is, is that I'll find, um, even with a lot of women, a lot of women that I talk to, I'll do uh, lives or have conversations with people on my podcast and they're 40 year old virgins. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not happy being a 40 year old virgin. And if you really ask them, they'll be like, 
it, it, it makes them feel unsuccessful in the area of romance because they never expect it. They're going into their um, they're facing things about freezing eggs at that mm -hmm. point where they've never had those conversations or never thought that they'll be talking to their uh, uh, what OBGYN about those sort of things. And now they're freezing eggs at 35. They never thought that. So now it's going past the threshold. Most women thought that they would be married by the age of 25 in their 20s. And then they're 35. And then mm -hmm. they're having these conversations with these doctors about freezing their eggs. Now it's opened up a whole nother door financially as well as Wow, now it's saying that I may have to, you know, raise a kid in my 40s because, you know, I'm going to have to get in vitro. So it's all these different things that starts going past a typical threshold where not only society, but even our physical bodies are saying we should be producing kids. We should be married by now. We should be uh, having a healthy love life since we ain't going to use the S word, uh, a, a happy love life. And um, oh, like having relations and help a healthy lifestyle of having relations. Yes, yeah, okay. we're gonna say relations since that's the word you you started off with. Please. Uh, and so this is what we're talking about because at the end of the day, when I talk to anybody, including myself, I thought I'd be married by now. Mm -hmm. That's just the that's just the truth. And so that when when I'm having conversations about the struggle of abstinence, is because I didn't think that I'll be having these conversations. Because I would have been married by now. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then now we're forced to have these conversations about, you know, um, what'd you say? Engaging in the M. What'd you mm -hmm. say? Mm -hmm. Engaging in the M because you thought you'd be married by now. You know, mm -hmm. and so it's these all well, these little things that we're doing. Hold on, Terrence, I don't, I, you getting you getting into the meat, and I want to get into the meat too, and I want to go there. But I want to bring you back a, a little bit because when I posted um the flyer people and i understood that the long and too long was relative right it's right. it's to each person how you define it that's why i said how do you define it i know you gave an example um when it comes to women but what about men as a man yourself do you feel like you've been abstaining um long and if so what helped you what helped you come up with that definition to say Latarius, you've been out here a little too because, long because i should have been because i felt um because i want to be married by now and then mm -hmm. even in the journey and all transparency in 2020, when I actually took a vow of abstinence, I've had some seasons where I was successful in it for six months or whatever, then I'll fall off mm -hmm. and then I'll start back up again and then fall off. So that's been, that's what my journey has looked like. It's on again and off again and six and seven months here and then fall off for some, some months then, and then start back up. It's just, it's, it's exhausting to be honest with you mm -hmm. because my desire is married. Right. So mm -hmm. every year that turns over the calendar year where I am still single, I am forced to continue practicing abstinence by, by my biblical belief. So let me ask you this, Latera. So you was like, you know, you'll be on a good stretch six months and then kind of fall off. But one of the things that you said that you were able to gain while being abstinent is being disciplined. Right. So do you think like, yes, I'm disciplined, but one of the indicators for me that says like Latarish, you've been abstaining long or even too long is because now you have like, like that burning with, you know, it says, uh, it's, it's better than married and burned. It's about burning with passion, right? It's like, yeah. okay, Latarish, it's like you're disciplined. Cause you know, you could have did it maybe at two months or there's more yeah. that you could have done. And maybe there's no conviction and you know, you're trying. Do you think that's an indicator? Cause now you're like falling more often. That's a good way to look at it. Cause I didn't even think about, the, the way too long. Cause I think sometimes when I do fall off of it, I fall off in a sense of resentment. I should have mm -hmm. been married by now. God, if I'd have been married right now, I wouldn't be sitting up here struggling like this. Mm -hmm. And because sex, I mean, what's the word we're going to use? The, what, what relations. Word? Relations has always it. been uh, a thorn in my flesh. Mm. You know, it's always been that from, from I fathered a daughter at the age of 18. So I've always I've been um, I've been experiencing and engaging in that lifestyle since I lost my virginity at the age of 16. Mm. And so it's always and then I get married at 28 and I'm married for 10 years. Now wow. my body has become acclimated to having relations for those 10 years. And then divorce happens. Now you're shocked. And now mm. you're withdrawal saying, oh, you did that for 10 years of your life. Now stop it. Mm -hmm. and you're like, what your body is responding like hold on this is what i'm used to what, what why am i in withdrawals it's right. like that's on drugs mm -hmm. drug 
uh, having relations is is related oftentimes when you're talking about uh, serotonin and all that type of dopamine, stuff. Dopamine, yeah. Dopamine, those are love drugs. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is now you're on this drug and then it's like, stop, go cold. you on that high, yeah, you got yeah. that high, yeah. And then get a divorce, cold turkey. Now stop. Mm. Don't touch yourself, don't do this, don't even do this until you get married again. And your mm. body doesn't just obey the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. You be fighting sometimes, like All get back flesh, get All back. Time. All the time. <laughs> so is there such thing as too long? Yeah, I think that when you when you start really getting down to the why, why are you waiting that long? Is mm -hmm. it that you can't find nobody, nobody checks off your boxes, but your true desire is to get married, but you're saying nobody is good enough. Uh, are you are you doing this because you've become so because you'll find people that may be abstaining, but they're they have toys and all this other stuff that they're dealing mm -hmm. with. But they're saying that I've gotten so used to myself that I don't even want to avail myself physically to anybody else. And so you got to start uncovering the trauma of it that's causing you to wait so long. Mm -hmm. Is the weight based upon unhealed trauma or is the or is the weight due to total submission to God and total surrender to God where you're saying, God, I can't make nobody marry me. Or as a man saying that, well, I'm kind of just wanting to play the field a little bit because I have commitment issues and I'm trying to abstain, but, or I am abstaining, but hmm. I say I want to be married, but I really don't want to be married because I don't have a, the, it's a, um, um, have a problem with decision-making. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to choose nobody. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's all of that. So when it's based upon that and it's coming from a place of um, trauma or the lack of wanting to make a decision and settle down with one person, that's when you know that you're waiting too long. Because in the day, then you'll find yourself straddling the fence and doing, I'm going to go, I'm going to push the boundaries just this much to yeah. kind of help feed that little thing. It's like when the Bible says, and that's what's so interesting because someone left that scripture when I made that, uh, when I shared the post today. They said it's better to marry than to burn with lust. Well, back in the day, that's what they used to use. The scripture they would use to, I don't want to say manipulate, but I'll use it for that. To manipulate people and just marrying anybody. You're, you're, you're dealing with your physical, because your body is going to do what the body is going to do. Mm -hmm. so that means that oh, I'm just, oh, I just want to, I want to have relations. I'm gonna marry you, Shakia, because I hey, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm feeling this right now. We're gonna get married, and it's like you haven't dealt with alignment. You haven't dealt with if God said that's your person. You say, well, mm -hmm. if I said, it's better to marry, and you just, and a lot of people, if we're honest, especially in in church where I grew up, that was a scripture that they would always say to circumvent fornication. Mm -hmm. Go get married to somebody, and then you find those people married to people, and it was only sustainable for a. a a short period of time, man, mm -hmm. years, 12 years, but they never dealt with the issues. They got married just to have legalized wow. relations. Wow. And that's, not, and that's, and that's not sustainable for a marriage. Right. So I didn't, uh, grow in, grow up in church. So I don't know that scripture. Like, I don't want to say people for them to weaponize it, but I didn't know they used that scripture oh. and then force people in to have, to get married solely off that. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think just thinking about that scripture and, and, and we can go into the next question talking about, does it seem like nowadays people are abstaining longer um, compared to the past? Right. Um, but I was going to say, I think when we talk about uh, people abstaining long nowadays and you're saying for all these different reasons, I think that scripture could be applicable because it's like, OK, if you're out here um, single and you're you're having a struggle to make a decision. Right. Yep. But you, you're, you're continuously falling and continuously uh, struggling, then you need to be a little more intentional. Right. Because it's better to marry to go ahead and make that decision. I hope it's not literally just anybody and everybody just pick somebody. Let's go. Right. I would hope it just makes them be more intentional. Be like, OK, I have this desire. I keep falling. I'm struggling. Let me be intentional about picking somebody and getting married and not being in this single season for five, ten years. But being intentional about finding someone so that I don't just keep sinning and falling into the same sin. But, yeah, I would hate for someone to take that scripture and just. And don't pick me, right? Don't, I, child, don't. Let's hear about Shakia. No, no, no. What are the reasons? <laughs> don't bring up that scripture about the Bible saying, eh, mm -mm, I'm Bible not the one. That. That's the scripture that we're going with. But that's the reality. But I, I, like, you didn't grow up in that that season, but that was what 
when you were in your eight, 18, 19, you're mm-hmm. literally burning with lust. That's we don't we don't from the body of Christ, we don't normalize hormones. It's mm-hmm. called hormones for a reason. Mm-hmm. You go get a seventh grade boy, his hormones are raging. I had to shape, I had to be very careful about how I even talk to my, my sons um, uh, about having relations. It's hard for me just not to say that. I appreciate it. Me too. Uh, I want to say the stuff too. Uh, about having relations or just, I don't say having relations because they're not even want to do that, but they're experimenting with their bodies. Just mm-hmm. reading the line. And one time I wanted to be like, you don't need to do that. That is, and then I, and I did that one day and I said, wow, I'm reintroducing trauma with the curiosity of a young boy, even young girls experimenting with their bodies, getting to learn their bodies by whatever influence they got to touch themselves or whatever. And I'm telling them that's, that's wrong. You need to quit doing that. Instead of having a conversation say, tell me why you're doing that. How are you Mm -hmm. doing right now? You're curious. You're, you're wanting to do this or whatever. Let's have that conversation. But in the body of Christ, oftentimes we will demonize the natural propensity Mm -hmm. to be curious about our body parts and to begin to touch our touch ourselves. Young boys do that often as young boys. Mm-hmm. They're going to experiment with their bodies, with themselves. Mm-hmm. And then as a, <laughs> with themselves. I'm trying my best to try this because I'll be like, let's just say the word, but they're going to experiment with themselves. Mm-hmm. But then if we don't have the framework to have these conversations, then we have demonized their own body parts and them touching themselves instead of let's have a conversation like that's natural that's Mm -hmm. why when you hit puberty you felt that when you were six years old you didn't feel that now you hit hormones you're not what god put inside of you these hormones that are raging are causing you to feel these natural Mm -hmm. desires let's talk about it because you're naturally you have a natural propensity to feel these things it's Mm -hmm. the same thing that too when you talk to uh um people and they start hitting they're premenopausal or or they even go through menopause. What they're feeling in their bodies, you can pray it out. You can speak in tongues. You can fast it out. God put that in your body called a biological clock that once it hits this point, your body is going to go to, through menopause. For mm-hmm. different people at different ages, sometimes they say menopause can start with women as early as 36. Around 44 years old to 54 is the standard in which most women go through menopause. You can speak in tongues. You can cast it out. Your body is getting hot flashes. You feeling this? You want to? You want to engage in and and the relations and all that stuff naturally in your body. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I'm saying is that if we give reference and framework and 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 normalize these natural things that God put inside of us. Prime example. Just left the doctor with my I call him my nephew son, and the lady began to talk about. You know, um, because they, you know, it's an annual checkup. The lady, she peeked inside his pants and said, all right, everything looks fine and all that. I said, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. I want my my nephew son to hear normalized speech around his genitals. Mm -hmm. I said, what were you looking for? She said, well, with young boys, uh, sometimes their scrotum doesn't drop. It goes upward. I've never heard that. If they didn't go through puberty, it goes upward and it goes inward. And they said, and so we have to look at that to make sure that it dropped and make sure that they are going through the natural progression of puberty or even if they've gone through puberty. They said, we also look at the size of it to make sure that it's going through puberty is actually getting a different length or whatnot. He said, and if it's not going through the proper uh, process of puberty, we'll send them to a specialist and they'll put them on hormone pills to Mm -hmm. to help it speed up that process. I asked my nephew, son, I said, how did you feel about her looking at you like that? He said, oh, it's no big deal because then she ain't looking at me in an awkward standpoint and it's to help me. Mm-hmm. I did that is because I want to have healthy conversations around this private part so we can talk about it because it's going to be a day and age where he's going to want to experiment and have relations with somebody and, and it may not be in God's timing. And I want to be able to be the first person he talked to because I've normalized that conversation. Man, Uncle Terry, let me tell you something, man. I mean, I'm feeling really, really horny right now. And mm. this girl, she over here trying to give me this and she trying to do this. I mean, I'm talking to you, but how do I deal with that? Listen, that's natural for you to feel like that. Absolutely. That's natural. 
Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what that does. Let me tell you what doors that open up. Yes, that's what I've been waiting for. Yeah, yeah. Have those conversations. Let's talk about what these doors open yeah. up. You have a natural propensity for this. And now let me tell you what happens once you open up Pandora box. Yeah. I'm telling you from experience and I'm telling you from a level of transparency. Mm -hmm. Have that real conversation, not the birds and the bees, but literally the real story about having sexual relationship mm -hmm. and how our bodies are drawn to that. And so that's what I mean by let's normalize these conversations because we, we get this ideology where we're just, we're just, we're, we're demonizing our own body parts. All right. Come on, Latiris. Nephew, son. <laughs> now I want to meet nephew, son. I just, um, left, I just left the doctor's office just now before I came and did this. How old is he? 15. 15. Okay. Yeah. Start having them conversations, right? And just even him understand, I get it, right? We have, I remember when I first started doing Instagram. Um, I didn't have friends that was, I had one, but then she crossed over to the other side, but I didn't have friends that was abstaining. Right. And, um, I remember make, like hearing people be like, I'll be praying God take the urges away. And I'm like, Oh, why? No, 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 no. I want mine. Right. Just help me to not succumb to them. Right. Not yeah. to be weakened by them, not to be led by them, but baby, keep them urges. I want them because then at the right time, at the right moment with the right person, Maybe it would do us some well, you know, some good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just even thinking about he's coming to an age where that conversation is needed because in those moments of horniness um, or lust, it can influence him to be irresponsible. Right. right. And that's a that's a harder conversation that you need to have after those consequences come. So I love that you're having like open dialogue and affirming that this is natural. It's not nasty. It's not weird. You're yeah. right on track. You're healthy, actually. But yeah. let me tell you where you need to. Um, you utilize or use these urges or put them towards. Uh, so I commend you, uh, Latiris, especially at this age. It's but I did that with my daughter when she was 12 years old. Mm. Like I, we, we had those, when I say we talk, I said, if you're going to learn anything, you're going to learn it from me. We yeah. talked about everything, talked about fingering, talked about, she was like, Ooh, why would a boy want to do that? I said, trust me. You're saying <laughs> you right now, but there's going to be a time where a boy is going to, that's going to be his gateway to you. Mm -hmm. I want you to hear that. And you'd be like, oh, I see what that is. My daddy told me about that. Yeah, my daddy told me about this. And you're going to want to do this. I talked to my daughter about oral. I talked mm -hmm. to her at 12 years old. And she was like, oh, how would I want a boy? And I'd be doggone. The next year, she was in a situation where a boy was about to do that with her. Mm. And I was like, this is what my dad told me. I'm talking about close off everything, conversation. This is what my daddy told me. And she stopped it. Wow. But Ed, uh, I'd rather her hear my voice rather than his influence and voice. His is sweet. Her, yeah, yeah. yeah girl, let me do this. Let me mm. do this. Girl, I'm going to do this. You're going to like this. Mm -hmm. and I even told her, I said, and you will like it. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't tell my kids or whatever, no, nah, sex is bad. Uh, our relations is bad and oral mm -hmm. is bad and it's nasty. You ain't gonna like it. It's just terrible. It's gonna do this. I'm gonna say, and you may like it. Yeah, you probably gonna. Like yeah, and you're and you may like it. It will feel good. Like it. So let me tell you why. That's why I give the truth and say, but let me tell you the other side of it. You have now mm -hmm. opened up the door for you to do blah 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 blah. Yeah. But when my daughter lost her virginity in college, she talked to me about it. Mm. And she said, Dad, hey. She ended up marrying the guy, you know, um, um, she's been married a year now, but they ended up getting married. But that was a conversation. I, I talked to them before I went to college and said, listen, y'all finna be away <laughs> by yourself in the rooms. This is what I want to. I said I had him sign a contract that he would not. He would return my daughter the way uh, I said, unopened. I know I was going to say like this, unopened. <laughs> I was going to say that. That's what I put in the contract. Now he he reneged on the contract. Said, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's like, yeah, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, we're gonna do that. And then and then, but the reality is to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And then when they slipped up and failed, to then have that conversation. You know, not that I'm looking at my daughter. I can't believe you. You are worthless now. Oh, you, you've given away your honor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's some it's some cultures that absolutely let, let a daughter have done that. You have brought Death. shame upon shame the upon the family. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, baby, listen, God's grace is sufficient and my love is too. So let's just talk about it. Now, mm -hmm. wasn't I right when I said that the men y'all do that? Now y'all going to start arguing about stuff that that was meaningless. Y'all had a cool relationship. Y'all weren't even arguing about 
petty stuff. Now Pandora's box opening and now your arc. She said, that's exactly what happened there. And yeah, we fighting over this and this, and then I'm getting insecure and I'm jealous over this. And then mm. and he, you wasn't like that at first. The day after, now all these different emotions come out. She said, you were right there. So that's what I mean, but to have those conversations. So let me ask you this, Harrison. We've talked about this on the phone before, but do you think it, it that we seem to be abstaining longer now, uh, currently, compared to, like, the past? One thousand percent. What is the reason? Days. What is the reason that we're abstaining longer? We live in a, a non-committal society. Mm. And on top of non-committal, we're dealing with all this. See, back in the day, the women would marry out of survival. Yeah, yeah. They needed for they got married for sustenance to be able provision. to the provision yeah. to be able to eat to yeah, be able absolutely, to absolutely. Nowadays, women <laughs> they're like, I don't need no Maybe man. Maybe I'm eating steak and lobster by myself. I got my own car. I got my own crib. I got my own whatever. So they're not desperate anymore. They don't feel like they have to do it. There's I no need about myself. There's no yeah. need. There's mm -hmm. no, no void. Factor. Yeah. Then you find the driving factor where they'll say, so that's the that's the first from the basis of it. Not mm -hmm. every woman operates like that. But when you say when why we're not getting married as quickly, yeah. then you have these men that non-committal. Mm -hmm. They like, and you got what you said. The ratio is what seven. <laughs> women, <laughs> women. Oh, no, why would I, why would I do something as crazy as get married? <laughs> Like, why would I do that? Like, we in these streets right, right now. Right, I'm winning. Outside. You know, mm -hmm. all these little slogans that we have, which all it means is we're non-committal. Mm -hmm. We're engaging in casual re relationships, casual sex, courtship is obsolete. All this stuff that, that what was taught in the past where people had courtship. You go and meet the father. You go talk to, you say, can I take your daughter out on a date? I'm talking, just go on a date. Mm -hmm. You knocking out the door. Right, who's your family? Who are your people? Who your people nowadays? You knocking at the door, daddy ain't there. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you knocking at the door. The girl lives on her own. She got her own apartment. She got her own life. So there's no accountability around her like that. And so you can go do whatever you want to do. She can be on whatever my mentality that is, and y'all can engage in whatever it is. But there's in today's society, we're lacking intentionality. We're we're even with when I when I always talk about. Just look at how our parents worked at the post office for 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. they had one job. Yep. Fresh out of high school, they got this job at the factory, worked there forever, and retired. Mm -hmm. Got their little pension, they're good. Nowadays, I talk to friends that's in corporate America. They be like, I worked at this job one year. They got a better offer, went to another job. Yeah. We're, we're, we're practicing non commitment in all areas. Mm -hmm. the job, we do this. And oh, I, and I, because I remember I was talking to one of my homegirls. She said, Man, the terrorists, if I get this one job, oh my, this is the job I've been wanting for a long time. <laughs> Man, $170,000 a year. If I get this job, I'm going to be there for a long time. Ever. She got that job three months later. <laughs> talking to her she said yeah i'm putting my application i said what happened heck i made 170 what if i can make 200 mm, chasing wow better so she said listen man I, I i'm gonna get this job i'm making 200 and then i said wow but you remember what you said a couple of months ago if god gives you this job you're mm. gonna be happy and content said and then she said well god won't don't want me to just stop here so now you have the mentality of you go from one job to the next job. And then you look back at your career and you said, I've had 15 jobs from the age of 18. Mm -hmm. We're dating the same way. We're, we're marrying the same way. Even yeah. when you're abstinent, even when you're abstinent, it still applies. Well, it applies from the standpoint in where the discipline standpoint, you still be disciplined. But then I say, why is it that? Are you getting out of these relationships if you're the type to be relationship oriented? Mm -hmm. Are you dating people for five years? Are you in a re committed relationship for five years? I believe if you're dating somebody for five years, way too long. If y'all yeah. can't make a decision. Oh, terrorists, yes. This what? man said today on the live, he said when he meets, um, you know, if he meets a woman five years till, till get engagement, because he said, one year them getting to know each other uh a year where he visits his, her family for the holidays two holidays and then the next year uh she visit his family for the two holidays and it was i said absolutely not he said five years minimum I, no three was the the stretch because when i pushed him on the five he said okay three but that's a stretch five years you talk about some i need to see visit her family 
for two ho- I said, baby, make up a holiday. If you're trying to see what the holiday is, throw a cookout, a game night, bring both families together. Like, no. I told him no. That's five years, he said. You told him no. That's but, that's what, but again, so that's what I mean. Somebody can be abstinent. Mm, and he's abstinent, right. And be sitting there dating somebody alone. You don't have, you have, you, you struggle with commitment. There's no mm-hmm. way of saying that because I can vet you quicker than that. I can sit there and date you and vet you. It don't take me no five, it don't take me a year to vet whether or not I want to marry you. Right. It don't take that long. You could be dating somebody, you know, need to know the right questions that you're going to ask and vet them properly and be able to go, oh, you're a person that's just going to be my friend. Mm-hmm. And you're cool and you can get to the next person quicker. And be like, I'm open to myself. If you're marriage minded, if you mm-hmm. just want to just have companionship and you don't care whether it leads to marriage or whatever, that's how you get to five years. That's how you get to three years with somebody. Mm-hmm. I don't have the time to spend investing in somebody that many years and it's not going anywhere. I, yeah. just, I just it's just it's literally a waste of my time. But that's how when you find yourself and then me, I don't want to fight my flesh for three to five years with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I said, this is, I'm, in my head, that's your person. Yeah. You're comfortable with them. You want to kiss them in the mouth. You're vulnerable. You know, all these things. It's like, you don't think you're going to be fighting? It don't make sense. It, it makes no sense. And you're putting yourself through some unnecessary trauma. <laughs> and unnecessary, like, um, opportunities for you to fall. Right? right? Like, why, why are we playing? Why? Yep. Sir, what, like, I, I just can't fathom, you know, I don't have my person, but in my head, like, they're just going to be it for me. Yeah. Just it, right? Yeah. And so yeah. I'm just like, why would I be playing with fire for five years? Yeah. And if I'm not tempted in five years, I must be doing some serious praying and fasting and, like, the strongest boundaries and just everything. But I just I just assume there's going to be moments, right? But I do want to ask you, Latiris, because I did talk to some people on live today and was like, you know, they were saying, okay, I've been abstaining long, longer than I thought I would be. And I'm like, okay, so then why are you here? Why are you still abstinent longer than you had thought? And, you know, people give a lot of different answers. And I, I believe, I believe it, right? But I'm like, man, could it be us? Have we ever taken some inventory? Like, it might be me. Like, with social media, what men, I think they have become very picky. And yeah. especially if you're a man of a certain caliber yep. and Again, I, I don't consider myself like an influencer, but I see an influence influencer culture. Uh, if you're a man that looks good enough and you could talk well and you could speak to women well, they will put you on a pedestal so high and sing your praises. And that can feed the ego right now. It's like in Instagram world or TikTok world. I'm that guy. Yeah. And they're learning. I'm an anomaly. Right. Yeah. I'm the man that women are praying for, wishing for, hoping for. You have now um, uh, uh, made them believe that they are creme de la creme. Yeah. So what yeah. do you think they're going to hold out for? Creme de la creme. The, the, the Instagram or social media world is their oyster. It's like, which one do I want that, that I can today, do better? It's like, I want today. To, hey, listen, <laughs> listen, but you're abstinent. I don't understand. Like, so I, I just, some people said healing. Right. And I'm like, Amen to healing, but like, are we ever fully healed? And then is something else going to come up then that we need healing from? Can it like be simultaneous, right? It should be. Right. So it's just like, why are we abstinent so long? We talked about this, right? Like, it just seems like now people are older, women especially, abstaining in their 30s and 40s. Why are we here? Grown men, why are you in your, you know, 40s and 30s. And I'm sure there's, a, you know, reasons behind it, but I'm just right. like, have we really sat and said, like, am I being too picky? They said last night, I don't want to compromise. I'm like, but we're all going to have to compromise to some extent. My point. A- okay, amen, right? He's going to compromise with you. Yeah. I'm not going to be his dream in every area. He got th- So, like, what are we talking about? What is really the list looking like, right? Yeah. I tell people, you can make a list and write it long. Maybe keep adding, but you can't complain at the same time because every time you add something, it's a whole pool of men or a whole pool of women that now are disqualified. Yeah. Right. So it, listen, but go ahead. You said your point. I want you to speak to it. Um, when you said why, like I'm moving, am I moving delayed? A little bit, but it's okay. Okay. The people uh, just want to hear what you got to say, Latiers. <laughs> uh, so what you were saying is that first of all, what were some of the answers that people said to you on their live? Um. Not wanting to compromise, not wanting to settle, 
um, not being <laughs> not being able to find a man of God in this year, like uh, a list of like five qualities, which I'm like, I bet you I can rally up about 10, but then you would say like, oh, but he's this and a third. So it can't be just that. Um, what else? Healing, uh, God. And I be telling people, amen, right? I think God does sit some people down, but mm-hmm. you really got to check and make sure it is God saying like you supposed to be sat down. So God um, not wanting to repeat their past, not wanting to end up with the wrong person. <sighs> I think that's the main one right there. And not wanting to end up with the wrong person because Mm -hmm. biggest fear is divorce, Mm -hmm. you know? And you say, I waited all this time to then marry somebody and then have my heart crushed and broken. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the things I say even about myself is that because I've experienced divorce before, I'm extremely more discerning when it comes to getting married again. And so. um, Well, you say extremely. Extremely. I want. I wonder. Does that work against you? Like we well, say, extremely. But go ahead. I thought it would, and I'll be uh, honest. I did a whole episode called "Healing from Heartbreak." I mm-hmm. met the woman that I thought I was going to marry in 2023, right. and so, um, and you you know about that. But I was going to marry her in 2023. She said she had some unhealed trauma that she needed to go get healed from, and that was in December 2022. So she ended it December the 27th of 2022. I had planned on marrying her September 23rd of 2023. So now due to unhealed trauma, it put me right back in these dating streets. Yeah. You know? And so what happens is, is that discerning is, listen, you said can healing and marriage be simultaneous? Or just dating, getting to know someone. Can, like, can you get, I'm sure not in the darkest of the darkest, right? But like, can you get to a certain level yes. where you're not fully healed, but. Yeah, I agree. And that's what I introduced to her. I said, listen, if I'm going to be your dude, like we're going to be going through this stuff. We're talking about to death. Do we part right. There's gonna be seasons of this? We're going to have losses with family members. We got to know if we can be 10 toes down with each other and help uh, navigate that space for each other. The therapist said that this is a great example. He said it's a great opportunity for you to see what type of husband. Hey, man, come on. Space. But due to her own trauma, she wasn't willing to. To mm. even. She was like, I just, I just can't. I just can't. She said, I'm gonna be toxic in your life. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna be toxic. And I was just like, okay. Uh, and allowed her to end the relationship. So when you talk about it's different circumstances that unfortunately, because I'm saying unfortunately, keeps us single. Yeah. A lot of women that I've talked to, they don't want to be single, meaning they don't want to be abstinent 10, 15 years, right? One years. Uh, I did this episode. Oh, I did this live, and um, this one lady always jumps on my live. Shout out to her, Eutropia. And Eutropia, I think she said she's been an abstinent for 21 years at one Woo! of my lives. 21 years, but she's 60. She's 60 something, and she had been married twice before, but then she's been, since her divorce, she's been abstinent for 21 years. Wow. Well, that's the journey, but the reality is beautiful woman, all that, but I don't know what the issue is. I don't know if she keeps meeting unintentional men or don't meet men at all. Yeah. Because the, the, the reality of it, truth be told, I know a lot of amazing women who are just not approached by quality men that would be a husband, husband material. They meet guys that ain't, they being serious. They ain't trying to have nothing. Sustain, they just, they just out here. So that's when you talk about the culture, that's the reality. The reality is it's challenging in today's ideology and these social media, you can scroll on social media. A man better be able to provide a hundred percent finances. So the dude's like, "Is this what women think?" Well, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I can pay my own bills. <laughs> I got to the point I can pay my own stuff. Right. This woman, these women, they're gonna generalize. All these women expect the men to be able to pay all their bills. Why can't you pay your own bills? Yeah. Before I bet you, you was paying your bills. I knew you. I was thinking. That too. So now we get together. Now you just gonna stop paying all your bills, and I'm supposed to pay all your bills. Where your money going? What we doing with your money? Well, my money is my money is my money, and your money is my money. That's a Mm. toxic mentality. Yeah, hear people say that so much. Women say that, and they think they're saying it, and they're sounding cute. But if you have the ideology where it's not saying our money is our money, my money Mm. is our money, your money is our money. The happy wife, happy life stuff. That's a toxic statement. Because only your feeling. Happy house. You know what I'm saying? If we, it's everything has to be 
togetherness. If mm -hmm. we ever get to a point where we're, we're saying something where you're benefiting and I'm not, that's right. not marriage. That's not even a good contract, period. If you went to a job and they said, we want you to come every day and we want you to work 40 hours a week. And you say, OK, thank you. Thank you. I want you to do this job description. This you say, thank you. Thank you. And then you say you're waiting. They say, that's it. You're like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> How much am I going to get paid for this? <laughs> you're not. You're, you're going to come here. And you're going to work this. OK, do I got health insurance? You got <laughs> I'm going to come work for you. This is a one sided agreement. Right. You want to work for you and do this. But we say stuff like happy wife. Happy life. Mm -hmm. You're going to benefit, and I'm not. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you my money. I'm going to pay all your bills. You get to keep your money and do what with it? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's this toxic mentality, but a lot of men are digesting that, and a lot of women are digesting that. And then they just say, Yeah, uh, when men are like, Nah, there's no advantage for a man to get married. You start I've hearing heard that. I, I've been hearing that, right? How's it advantageous to the man to get married? They say, what, what benefit is that? Mm -hmm. Then they'll talk about the negative side. Say I meet this woman. I marry her. She gets the divorce. She automatically takes half. Yeah, she takes my money. Yeah. yeah. How did you get to divorce that quick? Why are you planning the downfall? <laughs> we get yes. a divorce. She takes half. Right? <laughs> like, is, that the, is that the natural progression of marriage? Yeah. How about you get married? You have a thriving life. You get a woman that asks you and what you thought you was making before that you thought you was balling out of control and you mm. was making 100000 because you got your purpose partner with you. Now you're making 300000 Can Come that on. be an option? And Come then y'all get married and y'all y'all build legacy and y'all and you produce kids and y'all have the spiritual authority to chase away 10,000 demons. Why? Because mm. the Bible says that one can chase away 1,000, but two can set 10,000 demons to flight. Is that an option? Is mm. it an option to build legacy and now you have this person and the and, and studies show that when a man is married and happily married he lives longer and he earns that more happens. money is that an option mm -hmm. so we go and say all the negative stuff that causes somebody to be like we don't benefit from marriage that's because you're listening to the wrong teachers telling mm -hmm. you they don't benefit from marriage but if you go talk to some happily married men they will tell you the wisest decision they ever made in their life outside of uh of giving their life to christ amen was deciding their wife mm -hmm. I have not met one of them that said that that has a happy marriage. They'd be like, oh, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. Right. <laughs> best thing that happened to me. I, I notice moments that I'm single when I'm going, I had to get my wisdom tooth pulled out a couple uh a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and they'll tell you, hey, you have a designated person to take. Yep, I knew I was gonna go to. <laughs> I don't got nobody. <laughs> I don't got nobody to drive me back. I don't got nobody. <laughs> I was just like, what? They said, you need somebody to take you. And I was like, right. who can I get? Mm -hmm. All those moments that make you feel so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. That's Kariti. I was on the phone with her. She said, hey, what you doing? I said, I'm going to go to the dentist tomorrow and I got to get my wisdom to the pool. She said, you need me to take you? And I said, yeah, go ahead and take me. Yeah, I do need you to take me. She knew. She understood. She said, you need somebody. Was, yep, I'm going to come I get you. I had nobody. But, but Think about it. If you're married and you're in a healthy marriage, you will never have to feel that feeling. And I'm saying like, you don't have nobody for it. you to feel that you're alone and you feel like mm -hmm. you have nobody that covers you when you're sick. And listen, yeah, listen, that covering, that's what's that's coming to, uh, I guess, awaken me now. Right. That covering. And I'm like, man, Shakia, like now I desire I see different pockets of my life where, oh, man, I'm uncovered. If a man was uh, in my life, then, you know, X, Y and Z. Or, and I told you that, right? Like yeah. having someone to celebrate your accomplishments with, right? Having yeah. someone to vent to, cry. Lately, I've been wanting to hug. Just like yeah. a real, <laughs> like just a, a embrace, right? Yeah. Preferably from a man, okay. But Maybe. just like, you know that, man, you don't know, but just that hug from a man, not sexual, just that, just, just swallow you up in the arm. You, you know, know why? It's because that's our natural need. Mm. They said, I remember, and I don't want to uh, misquote this, but it was talking about, it was a story about somebody that never had physical touch and that you get physically sick if mm -hmm. you don't get a chance. The worst thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The worst thing you can ever do to an inmate is put him in solitary. I was going to go there. They did a documentary on it and he wanted to like touch the report. He was like, I haven't touched someone in X amount of time. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking about That's this. Like God wired us. Mm -hmm. You got to have physical touch. So when we get so super saved, where we like, nope, I'm not going to kiss nobody. I ain't going to touch nobody. I ain't going to hug nobody. I'm going to give you a church hug like this. That ain't enough at times. 
I'm just talking about for me. It'd be times mm. where I'd be wanting an, an embrace. I mm. want to hold somebody. I want to feel that warm embrace, that intimate hug. You want that. But then we'd be like, nope, that's going to open up the doors for this. You had, it's like, look, Lord, you know what I'm saying? Now at 45, I can't hug nobody. Mm -hmm. But as a little kid, we're running right. up hugging everybody. We sexualized it. And I was going to say that. Um, now, I don't condone cuddling. Okay, no, I'm not telling you how to go cuddle. Right? But I remember, again, when I first got on Instagram, I'm speaking from my own personal um, journey. And for me, cuddling, you know, because I'm a virgin and, you know, right. I, ain't, I ain't did everything that everybody did. No judgment, no shame. But my association with, association with cuddling did not lead to sex. And for a lot of people, it's like cuddling is the catalyst. That's where it starts. And we know where it ends. But I'm like, for me, it wasn't sexualized. So it really was innocent. And I've been able to cuddle and, you know, X, Y, and Z. Same thing, I think, with now use wisdom. Don't get me wrong. You Use yeah. wisdom. Honor that. But the same thing with a hug. But what I was going to say is that I used to use that as an example. Like if I cuddle with my cousin or my cousin cuddles with somebody like that's different. No, if we're just going to say cuddling in and of itself is like sexual. Then that would be across the board. Right. We can never cuddle and it'd be sexualized. But because it's not, we make it sexual. We can say cuddling in and of itself is innocent. Same right. thing with a hug, right? It can be super innocent. I've had great hugs and I've had some nasty ones too. Okay. When someone was poking me, then it ain't so innocent, sirs. Um, sure. but I've had right, they know. <laughs> but I've had some that was super innocent, right? And just just a warm embrace. Cause they know what they be doing. Talk about come a little closer and then you get poked. And I'm like, that's just real. Okay, so it's it's us. We're the problem. Um <laughs> Listen, and on that emergency contact, it's a real thing. I was talking to Portia. Portia was my guest uh, last weekend, uh, Portia Love, and she's recently engaged. And we was on the phone, Kiki, and I was like, you got an emergency contact now. And she was like, girl, like, you know, but we're laughing, but it's a real thing. That emerge. my husband, we were talking about that. My husband is my emergency. Man, what's his name? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I just oh, I thought it was first name my last name husband. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you wouldn't need to know the relation. It was my husband. Y'all don't know him. Okay. Um, that but yeah. <laughs> Child, funny. listen, it hit different. Like, yeah. My brother should not be my emergency contact. <laughs> they probably call him thinking it's my husband. To my Mr. Seba. No. It's a brother. Um, but oh, oh, another thing I was thinking what came to mind is that comfort, right? Yes. We can get super comfortable um being yeah, absent. Yeah. Being absent, especially yeah. if you are outsourcing getting your uh needs met, right? Yeah. So yeah. everybody that's abstaining ain't you know just warding off toys and whatnot. So also yeah. with the engaging in me um uh watching, you know, the P playing yeah. having the toys, it's like well, what I need you for? And like you said, that, that that boss man tell you where I, I'm providing for myself. The only thing that I really needed you for was I, I, X, I, Y, Z. And yeah. I bought that. I yeah. got, I got, I got, I done bought all those, so I'm good. Yeah. And I've heard women say that. Uh, no, no. Because I do. I do. <laughs> I, yeah. I have the friends, right? They tell me like they're not pressed. They're like, child. And, they said, and I can get this without all the drama mm -hmm. that comes from a man. The the emotions that's tied to it. Listen, I can I can adopt, right? Like, and so that's why when people even ask me, they're like, "Oh, Shakia." First of all, they be in my business real heavy. That's one. I don't know you, but they're like, "Oh, do you use toys and whatnot?" And I'm like, for me, and this is just me, my first experience is not going to be with a toy, right? Yeah. That that's just one. I just that never even went to my mind. Like, oh, that'd be my first experience. But also, <laughs> I want to create a longing. <laughs> No, you lose your virginity too. Well, it was right. called Are you a virgin? Well, <laughs> <laughs> let me unpack it, right? Um, my mind went somewhere. Thank you, Lord. But uh also I want that void, right? I want that longing where that desire, that itch can only yeah. be scratched by my husband, right? Yeah. I have a friend that will say that she's like, I don't care how mad we are, I will never deny him relations. Right. Yeah. She also want the relations. OK, but yeah. I want there to be a void, my body to be connected with my man to yeah. say when we experience this, it comes from him. I want that association. Yeah. Right. I don't ever want my mind to go. Oh, well, I don't need him. I, I can do it myself. What? Yes. What? Yeah. No, no. So I think people can't be comfortable where it's like same thing with men. I'm going to take my sweet time, right? Because they getting it off a different way. And yeah. I'm going to wait till the, 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 the perfect one comes along. Because there's no, what am I rushing for? 
there are no perfect people. That's the thing about it is that we're chasing perfection and not realizing. But you got to understand, we live in a filter driven society. Everything is we can get BBLs and mm -hmm. we can fix anything we don't your like. Height, your height. You can get taller. I seen the guy went from five, five to six, one. Yep. Change that bone in his leg that yeah. allowed him to do. I said, anything you want to change. I saw somebody on Instagram the other day that got abs surgically put mm -hmm. in. You know, it's like all this stuff. And so now we're looking for perfect people. One of the things that I always say that I love the most is the imperfection in the human body. Mm -hmm. That's why I said I'm not attracted to the woman that's just perfect. Everything is all perfect and every she done got all this work done, all this. That's not even attractive to me because you you look the you removed all the imperfections quote unquote and it doesn't even look good to me mm -hmm. it's like and what makes I, you unique yeah it's like i like to see that i like to see your body look a little tethered because you didn't have a child you know what i'm saying a little cellulite I, a little cellulite a little stretch mark it does something to my spirit you understand a little dimple here and there <laughs> A little fat meat hanging over. Okay, come on. Like that little, like, because think that about it. jiggle. Think about it, because the, the first thing that Jesus did when he came from the grave to let you know what he had been through is he showed mm. you his scars. He showed you the scars. Oftentimes, we're so busy trying to cover up our scars, our imperfections. And, and but it, what, what if that nose that you got that you think is too big was the thing that you got to help you understand, to build your self-esteem, that you'll be able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, and I'm still beautiful. Mm. But, then, but then you done change that very thing that you quote unquote struggle with all your life. I just hated that my nose would look like this. And you and you you got to 35 years old, changed it. And, and, and it's like, I, I don't think that you learned the lesson that, you, that you're supposed to learn. I remember growing up, I used to hate, I said, my lips are big. Everybody, big lip, big lip boy, big lip. You know, you got some big lips. As I got older, come on, somebody. Mm, they said juicy. They said describe a fool. Lips on me. But think about it. As a kid, big lip, big lip, big lip. And I remember this is teacher that told me one day, this, you know, she wasn't trying to holler at me like one of these teachers that be going to jail, be messing around. Right, right. But I was in theater. I did this play, and the lady was putting um makeup on me and doing all that type of stuff. She said, you have really nice lips. Mm. That's all I needed to hear when I was in the 10th grade because for all those years, I heard I had big lips. Mm. And that teacher spoke life into me. And I said, oh. And I started looking at myself differently. differently. And, and, and then as I got older, I never even think about my lips no more. Don't even, it don't even cross my mind. It, don't, mm. it has nothing to me. It, it's nothing. But I had to get to the point to where I began to be confident and what other people may look at and say, that's a, something that's not attractive, so to speak. Mm. And so we're so busy trying to chase perfection. Where I was going is that we're so busy trying to chase perfection that we're looking for perfect people. Mm -hmm. I need a man that's six foot five, make $100,000 a year. He got to be this. He got to be athletic. Be all this. He'd be like, do you realize what you just described? Is the dream man for all these women? Lateris, Lateris, can we put a pin in it? Listen, because that's another thing I had to talk to the woman about, right? So uh, shout out to the Sexless Tribe. But there was a young lady that came. We have a monthly Zoom uh, tribe talk. And she, it was right after one of the meetup experiences. And she was a little frustrated. She said she tried to talk to one of the guys in the tribe. And I think he just, you know, politely said, you know, I just see you as a friend. Huh? He just said he wasn't interested. Yeah, like I see you as my, my friend. And she was like, um, she fell away because she was like, when I was in the world, I never had an issue getting a man. But now, you know who I want. He's really not checking for me. And she was like, it was this other guy that was like trying to get to know me at the meetup, but I wasn't interested. I said, girl, you're and I already I knew who she was talking about, but I was like, you're going after the guy that like probably 10 other women are as well. Right. Yep. It's it's the it's the standard guy that the women are looking for, um, especially within the Christian community. Right. Yep. And I was like, so, again, if you know, he's the it guy. No shade. He's he's looking for the it girl, not saying she's not, you know, what I mean? but like he has a an ideal woman as well. Right. So you can't get mad like what everybody you're not going for the one that's in the corner. Ooh. internal temp high. Allow it to cool. Oh, that was the first. Is this your phone? No. Oh, it's a laptop. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, hold on. Talk to them. Say something to Terrence. All right. So, um, welcome to Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host. 
<laughs> now listen, she's trying to get her phone cooled down. Uh, I wish I could see stuff in the chat so I can see what some of the questions are. Um, as I look, let's see. I used to hate my kinky hair. And now people stop me. Exactly, Abby. You, you, you know, we have a tendency to not like certain things about us, and then that'll become the very thing that people love about us. And that's why I believe that when the Bible says we have to learn how to abase and how to abound, that we got to get to the place to where we're happy with ourselves, we're content in who God called us to be, and we're able to, um, they always say, um, accentuate the positive, where we're able to look at the positive things about us and accentuate those things. And if those other things that we don't like about ourselves, we can do the work. We can go get on a treadmill. We can go work it out or do whatever that is, but it shouldn't get to the point. And you've seen it before. You've seen people where, you know, if y'all ever watch botched, I used to watch the show botch a lot where you have these people that keep coming in over and over to get surgery and then they'll change this and then they'll, oh, well, now I changed my nose. I don't like the way my cheeks look. So then they have to change their cheeks to fit their nose. And they go, wow, I changed my nose and now my cheeks, now my lips look crazy. So then they go get uh, injections in their lip. They go, oh God, I got my, now my forehead look crazy. Now because my nose changed, my cheek changed, my lips changed, I need to change my forehead. So you start doing all this stuff and you just keep chasing it over and over, trying to chase perfection. When you looked better, and I know I ain't the only one saying this, you've seen some people that looked better before they got all this work done. That just lets me know that as great as these surgeons are, God created you a masterpiece already. Even with your imperfections, that God created you as a masterpiece already and then everything that you did to mess up the painting the worst thing you could ever do to an artist the worst thing you can do to an artist talk to any artist is to take their completed work and then you go start adding your workmanship on it it's the biggest insult <clears throat> that you could ever make to an artist it's an insult and so that's what we do a lot with uh with the masterpiece that guys created with us we are masterpieces and then we go in, we start changing stuff and getting surgery and all this. And God said, you just you just insulted me. You messed up my greatest work and mm. my greatest work. Hey, Amen. Thank you, uh, Latares, for holding it down. You, I bet you was talking good. Now, I didn't hear one word you said, but I'm believing. Yeah, we're talking uh, about a masterpiece that God created. God created us a masterpiece. The, the, the title of the sermon was. Okay. You all God. right. You give the people one minute. He didn't yeah. preach the, the, the whole sermon. Was, oh, turn to your text. Take your text out and turn to the book of <sighs> Y'all, you, know. you get the people just one minute. They just take over the whole show. But I appreciate you, Liz Harris. But yes, what I was saying is that like, um, they're all going after the same guy, right? Here it was a guy that was interested in her. But yeah. She wasn't checking for him. But it's like, y'all, we're, we're going after like the 1% guy that yeah. Yeah. everybody wants. So again, just speaking to, are we um, being abstinent longer than we should or we need to? Is it is it us? Are we the problem? I think that there's different there's different things with different folks. It's not like a one stop shop. It's like mm -hmm. different people is different reasons. Some people may have commitment issues. Some people are really intentional about finding the one, and they ain't got time to be playing games with people that's playing playing games with them. So mm -hmm. they they they've, they've submitted themselves to God to say, God, I want you to bring your person to me, and I'm not moving. I'm not going to be out here dating multiple people. You need him to show up as an Amazon delivery guy and he need to be able to say that I'm your husband because I don't have no more time for heartbreak. Amen. You have that situation. You deal with women that, um, you know, one in five and even those statistics, they say one in five or they say one in three women who have been victims of uh, essay um, to be able to deal with that because they're dealing with trauma or whatnot that may be unresolved. And they just saying, hey, now I found value in my body. And I'm not going to give that to anybody that can't value it. And so you may have that dynamic going on. And so I say for different people, there's different reasons. All I say that to thine own self be true, whatever it is for yourself, then you need to um, really unpack that and find out why are you abstaining so long? And it's not even about abstaining. It's about uh, being noncommittal, you mm -hmm. know, because that only thing that does is just say, hey, I've been abstaining for 25 years, for 10 years, 15 years. Well, are you just noncommittal? Like, yeah. just deal with it. Are you happy being single? Do you feel like you don't want to deal with nobody else? Mm -hmm. Is it? But if you're if you're 
uh, a healed, redeemed person. That Come on. Intense. Fine. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> you just haven't been meeting the right guys. And these guys playing games with you, then kudos to you. You're doing, you know, well done, thy good and faithful service. Thank you. I spoke. feel like I was fitting in that category. <laughs> oh no. Hey man, listen, truly though, I want us, I, I want it for those who want it, right? And if, if if it's truly in God's will, I want them to have that. And that's why I'm like, can we just sit and talk like why are we here? Yeah. Right. Some people are content, right? That was that was me. I feel like I'm getting little, little desires. But for those that aren't content, like, is there anything that we can do? I tell women all the time, we talk about it today, there's some women that are single, therefore they are abstinent, right? But they will never message a guy. I'm not saying, you know, chase him down, pursue him, but- drop, drop the handkerchief. Yeah, drop the hanky, that's it. Make yourself noticeable. We live in a social media world. I know they say like years ago, I think tradition a lot of times taught us, like I get it, the man is the pursuer as he should be. Yeah. Uh, more times out of 10, they were making the first move, but social media wasn't around then either, right? So when we're talking about social media, I could be scrolling on IG and I see somebody that look good to me and he talking good, he don't see me yet. Nope. Can I not say, slide his demon, say, hey, that was a fire song that you put on your page. That's how you should shoot your shot like that. Absolutely. You just present. So I Absolutely. like to even say from a woman's standpoint, it's just present. Mm -hmm. I've always said this on my podcast. I said men should pursue and not persuade and a woman should present and not pursue. Yes. I so, tell my men friends that. Yeah. So at the end of the day, a woman should just say, I'm here. And then he look and be like, hey. Oh, he's going to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Girl, so what's your name? So where, where you live? What city you at? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Just that. <laughs> let him do it. If you if you present and he like, oh hey, how you doing? And he mm -hmm. don't care. He's just not interested. Absolutely. In that's okay too. And that's okay too. If he don't take it, then it's like okay, cool. He letting you know he's not interested. But yeah, so even just in this space, to him like, you know, you're saying I didn't want to be absent this long, but hey, ain't no way I'm about to message no guy. I ain't, okay. Right. But yeah. now I'm questioning, like, are you there longer than you need to be? I know people in the tribe, the women, a, a handful of the women who are now married, message them first. And guess what? They are happily married. No one's talking about it. They just live in life. Right. So, again, just I want it for them. But again, just having these conversations to be like, yeah, sometimes I believe it is God. But sometimes I think it's us. We get in our own way. You're healed enough. Let that, you know, let. And I'm speaking to me. There was a guy that I was interested in. And I was in a really difficult time in my life. And um, I remember he was, he wanted to help. And I was like, there's nothing you can do. Like, it's me and God. <laughs> like, it's, that that was my mindset, right? In hindsight, maybe like it could have worked in tandem, right? Maybe it could have been me and God and him, right? But in that moment, I got in my own way, right? And this is someone I was interested in, right? So it's just like, can we talk about why are we here long? And then is it up? Or did you push him away? I did not push the man away. I politely withdrew. <laughs> you, did, you, did, you did what that girl did to me. No. no. <laughs> oh, she my kindred. Oh, goodness. I'm only going to talk about you. Left Latiris. That's a good man. A That's good a, man and me and her sister, sisters. <laughs> I'm team Latiris talking to you like, no, she didn't. No, she you had did to what? You was putting in effort, Latiris. I seen the pictures, the stories. Latiris was putting, baby, the plans he had for him and her. I was like, that woman, she'll know. <laughs> right. And the whole time I just realized me and her were sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so Woo! real, man. It's so real. <laughs> we just be just. So when you look back at that, why were you so me and Jesus going to work it out? And, you know, I don't need you to, jo to journey with me through this process. Is that pride? Y'all, let's hear trying to flip it. He oh, think this friend. the Dear Future Wifey podcast. That's what he think right now. But see what we ain't going to do. Okay. I'm not on the yellow couch, brother. So you ain't getting up in my business. So let's <laughs> mosey on along and continue to the next question. <laughs> Uh, so this question. <laughs> You're such a hater, boy. A, yeah, yeah. I am a supporter. Mm -hmm. oh. Go ahead. Keep me in the hot seat. Keep asking me. Right. Go ahead. A little hot. Okay. So listen, this question isn't, I don't, I was hesitant to explore this question with you because I was like, I didn't want it to be um, instill fear. I didn't want it to instill discouragement, but I think it's worth exploring because we've explored it. Right. Yeah. So what are some of the 
Push your mic cushion down. Is is coming off? I don't think it was a lot going on over here. Thank you. You sir. look. That's a good man right there. You hear me? Let me tell you something. Look, that's a good man, Savannah. Let me tell you something. What Terrence told me, and now I need to be like, if you ain't talking like the Terrence, okay? <laughs> what I say? Because somebody had said real quick. He was like, um, and look at whatever is good for you or yours, right? But what a friend of mine was like, you know, he believes when you get married, you submit to the man's vision. Cool, cool, cool. Amen. But I said, well, what about somebody like me that God gave me something in my singleness is bearing fruit? Do I do you think I just forfeit it when I get married? And I remember we were talking to you was like, whoever you marry, you going to you going to pour gasoline on what she got going on. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, they, if they don't got no gas, where the canister? <laughs> if he don't got because baby is fire up here. Where is the gasoline? You said, where's the canister? <laughs> where's the canister with the gasoline in it? Because I'm ready. Douse me. But that's what happens when you get you said, douse me. That's what happens when you get when you get re, when you get with the right person, and you'll be using that as confirmation. You go it, it, because the Bible says that, and it goes both ways. We hear it about, and God will give you a suitable helper. Talking about Adam, but the same thing that happens from a man's standpoint. You get your kinsman redeemer. You get Aww. a man that can cover you. You get a man Amen. that can look at the purpose in your life. And we hear this about the Boaz and you know and Ruth story or whatever. But the the great thing about it is that when you're with the right right person, your purpose should never die. The mm. purpose should be exemplified on a level that you go. Oh my God, let me tell y'all something. When I met so and so, I was doing this, and then he brought his intellect to mm -hmm. it. it took off to a whole nother level. Same thing with him. Man, I was doing this, I was trying to figure this. And the missing puzzle piece was with my wife. And she came, she said, Oh, you need somebody that does this. Mm -hmm. I believe that your spouse should be the person that is covering your blind spots. Oh, amen. Everybody has blind spots. Absolutely. I don't care how smart you are, how intelligent you are, how rich you are. You have blind spots in several areas of your life. If you get with the right person, they'll be able to say, I see what you don't see. And mm. that's what you see them. Amen. They are able to see what you don't see. And that's how you're able to see them. He said, quote that. Because you seen the hand clap. The hand clap was the signifier to quote it. Right quote Put that in the chat. Put that in the chat. Put that they in the see chat. You don't see. And that's how you will see them. Get off the mic, Lateris. Irk my nerd. Tell me something. <laughs> oh there was something else i want to insert it it's late but i love it I, uh one i forgot he's like an influencer but he had said um um him and his wife got together and got it together and i love that i love that yeah it got together and got it together and that's like that's wordplay right because it could be like we got it together like got to it like you know things but we also got it together like yeah you know yeah, yeah I just want to got it together Got it, got it together. together and got together. That's right. Because Powerful. We all try to get it together before, but then that's me, Lateris. Talk to me. Yeah, you try to get it before with it. And that's what happens to think about it. Because I hear men say, She don't need me for nothing. Yeah, else. come on. Come, listen, my aunt, she's older. I remember I was living to what I guess it don't matter. I was gonna say I was living with her in New York, but I remember her her man was coming over. They older, 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 older. And she was like, um, always make a man feel needed. Right. She was like, even if you got to fake it a little bit, right. Always yeah. find stuff for him to do. You need him to do this, but always make him feel needed. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's the nature of a man. You want a man to be a provider, but you won't let him do nothing for you. He ain't <laughs> even providing, taking out the trash for you. He ain't providing, putting gas in your car. He ain't providing, putting a change in your oil. You'd be like, I got that. No, I, I got my, 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 uh. my mechanic. My mechanic does this. You like, oh, well, I kind of like, okay, well, you know, I always look at this. It's interesting, but I always, you know, I'll be, you know, when I open the door for a woman, I look to see if she's used to submitting to the care of a man. Mm -hmm. And you can watch it. I can open a door for a woman and she's going to put her, a lot of women, they'll put their hand up against the door while they're walking through it. We defeat the perfect me, open the door for you. <laughs> I, I, I'm holding the door for you and you walk and you naturally, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. instinctively or whatever, you, because then I say, why you do that? Because I didn't, I didn't want you letting the door go on me. <laughs> Who you been dealing with? Why you been open the door for you and then let it go and hit you in the face. Right. And it's like, but instinctively, they're so used to doing it on their own that they, and, I, and, and I'll just call them out on that. Be like, why? Well, you know, I open the door for you, you know, this. Or you get the ones that's extremely helpful. You open the door for them and they get in the car and then they lean all the way over to the car to go push your side <laughs> of the door open like that. I said, baby girl, you ain't got to do all that. Right. 
stay in your feminine. It was watching that movie. Yeah, don't match my energy. Let yeah. me open the door for you. I don't mm-hmm. need a woman to open the door for me. You know, that's a little pet peeve for me. I'll be like, do not open the door for me. Right. You know, put me in a feminine role. Like, don't don't go do that. I'm trying to think. We've hung out where we've taken separate cars, but I right. have been in your car before, and you did open the door. So I'm I can. Att- I remember you got out. I think it was a truck that time. You yeah, got out, came around, and opened yeah. the door. And cl- yeah. So I will. I just want to confirm that you are talking. Um, right. Let me. Yeah. Facts. He ain't up here just talking. Let me tell you something. Recently, I was flying. Right. <laughs> and I remember, I'm getting off the. You know, the plane. And I got to get my luggage. You know, I'm little because you and you do remind me of how little I am. But I was getting my luggage and I remember the guy, this this gentleman was like, which one is it? And I was like, oh, it's right there. You know, the terrorist. I told my friend, he snatched that luggage and threw it down and snatched that handle up. I said, oh, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. I said, oh, oh. Oh, I ran out to find my best friend. I said, girl, listen, the way he took that thing down and, whoosh, and snatched. Let me tell you something, Lateris. <laughs> what? Okay, but then we coming back, right? We were on the same flight. I think we came in Thursday. Then uh, Monday I was returning. We wanted to be on the same flight. And he wanted to be behind me again. So we getting on the plane. I remember him, okay? I remember him. I don't know if you remember me, but I remember him. So we getting back on the plane, he behind me, and I go to lift up my suitcase. And here he go. Oh, let me get it. Lateris. It had to be at least a quarter off the ground. Baby, do you think I said no, no, I got it? I I put that suitcase down so fast. So you do got it, sir. Thank you. And I sat down. Sat you. down. Sat put it down. Up. But something as simple as that is very powerful because you'll hear some women, no, I got it. Right. Like, right. why do you have to say you got it? Let you said I you don't want to get it. Get it for you. Let him get it. Mm-hmm. Let him get the suitcase. Yeah. Let him help you. If a dude passes by and you're carrying something out the about a Best Buy and you got a TV, he said, "Let me help you put that in the car." Nah, I got it. You know, just be like, "All right, now you fumbling, you dropping it." Just, just let him do that. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just rest in that beautiful thing called femininity. Mm. Rest in it, and that's what happens is most men they'll see all this stuff that a woman has and they're trying to find their place in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'll resolve it to there's nothing for me to do in her life. She mm. got she don't need me. And they'll say that she don't need. Mm. They don't even say want me. She don't need me. And you be like, no, I don't need you, but I want you. Right. That's a rebuttal. I don't need you, but I want mm-hmm. you. And then you have the base about what's greater, need or wants. And then you have these little goofy conversations. No, a man wants to be needed. Period. Mm-hmm. If he's a good man, if he's a man to be like, I don't care, I'm gonna sit up on your. Couch. <laughs> she you got it. Let her get it. No, it's fine. Sit down. She said she got it. Pick that one up too. Get that. Go make get mine. She over there putting the furniture together. He's sitting there watching her. She put the shelf together. He like. He says wrong. I think you messed up somewhere. And, it, and that's what I mean is that it's this beautiful thing that's exchanged that we all need each other. Mm-hmm. You know, we need we just need each other. And we and and but that's what I mean by making sure that we're not so influenced by social media. Yeah. Telling us that. Oh, and, and women sitting up there saying, I, I, I don't need no man. I can have this. I got my homegirls. We do good. We go to happy hours and we go on girls trips. We don't need no man. Then now you're introducing a lesbian spirit. Mm. You know, in this world to say, you don't need a man. Now, why Mm. did God create us together? Why did he do that? Mm. God just failed and just said, y'all don't need each other. That we've evolved so much that a woman no longer needs a man and a man no longer needs a woman. It's like, no, we work so well together in harmony. And if we can focus on each other's strengths and, and, and say, I'm weak in this area, you're strong in this area, then we have this beautiful relationship together. Absolutely. Oh, Lateris, I feel like we're on the phone. I forget it. <laughs> Get it together, Lateris. Get it together. All yeah, right. Get it together. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is a question I said I was a little nervous about asking, Um, but what do you think the negative effects are with waiting long? And we touched on this a little bit about, um, you know, like, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah, you said it. Is that I believe from a physical standpoint, we're we're dealing with some physical situations. Uh, from a man's standpoint, if you're waiting, you're abstinent. So if you're abstinent really, really long, and I said I'm gonna be, I'm gonna bring a medical, um, I'm gonna talk to a doctor and have them come on my platform. We're gonna talk about that. Well, 
you can struggle really big with erectile dysfunction. You just, you just, you not even. I remember. Am I with this guy that might have permission to say this? Yeah, I'll say it. So I she remember. can't do what happened now. Yeah. <laughs> what you no, say? it's just the real. I remember when I was when I was abstinent. It was a long period. I started thinking something was wrong with me because I wouldn't even get erect no more. Mm -hmm. I literally would not get erect. I'll wake up and I was like, normally I'll wake up and, you know, I'll be strong. Now it just, I just have that. And I said, did God, did you take away my desire for sex? Did you just take that away from me? You know what I'm saying? And so the reality, it started dealing with my psychology. I said, mm -hmm. I'm going to mess around, get married and tell my wife I was abstinent for two years, three years, and I can't even perform for her. That was a real thought that I had. And truthfully speaking, when I engaged in, in what word did you say? In relations. In relations. After, in relations after that, it was very much so ego driven to be able wow. to see if I still had it. That's the facts. Mm -hmm. Then when you talk about it from a woman's standpoint, or I even say this, I was talking to this couple. I can't wait till the episode drops. It's going to drop next month. But I had this couple who were abstinent with each other. They were together for three years. They actually cohabitated with each other. They lived with each other. They didn't touch each other and do anything. They didn't do what, nothing. But when they got married, they struggled with having sexual relations. Yep. Well, relations. Mm -hmm. They had trouble doing that because they said they got so used to never touching. Absolutely, touch yeah. So they said that they have to remind themselves Hey, we've been going a long time without making love to each other. Don't you think it's kind of overdue? <laughs> think, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and try this again. They, mm -hmm. they, they created a relationship before they got married where they had no relations. Then they got married, and that's a it's an afterthought. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Which is which becomes a problem in the marriage because it's like I feel like I'm just with my homeboy. We done oh, did no. that. And then it's like, okay, we need to connect. Because the beautiful thing about having relations is to be able to connect, to find oneness with each other. Mm -hmm. so you have that situation going on. You have women that I've talked to that have been abstinent for really, really long. And they don't even want it. It's like they're so shy when they get yeah. married. Not let they husband see them and all. It's like they just, they just weird. You know what I'm saying? Just really <laughs> okay, weird. hold on. You're just weird. That's what we're gonna say. It's so different. It's weird. If you were a, a, if you were a virgin, I understand. But I'm oh, talking okay. about people who have stopped and it's been so long that now the person is like, oh, she don't want, what she don't want me or what, what's mm -hmm. going on? And they literally have to go to a sex therapist to help them have a normal. Mm. Healthy, healthy life with relations. Mm -hmm. They have to go get help on that where they never had to get help with that before in their in their whole lives. Mm -hmm. And that's just the physical stuff. You, you know, if you want to have kids and that other stuff, that's just the, the common stuff that you've been you've been waiting so long that now you've aged out the healthy age range to have kids. Mm -hmm. And now you have to, that's a real thing that now you have to go and say, well, now do I really want to have kids? Yeah, I really want to visit this. I really wanted kids. I thought that I would have kids by now, mm -hmm. but I don't. Now I have to figure this out. Now should I adopt? Should I have uh, a surrogate? All this other stuff that's that, that's happened because you waited all this time for whatever reason, and now you've been introduced to a new set of issues, possible new uh, a set of trauma that you have to introduce to now have to deal with. Yes. Uh, so thank you, Latiris, for sharing that. Like I said, we we talked about it, and I definitely wanted to address it. But what I didn't want is for people to be discouraged, no, um, to be, huh? I said, no, we're just going to deal with the real. Right, with the real, right? I didn't want now people like, oh, goodness, now I got it. My goal was like, I hope we be more intentional now, right? Yeah. I believe some people have been sat down uh, by God. I truly believe, right, in his time. But I think we are doing a lot of uh, hemming and hawing. Right. Yeah. Where we don't need to be doing all this him and harm because there are um, there's some there's some effects. Right. That we can um, I'm going to say circumvent, but we can avoid. Yeah. Right. If we just sit down and be a little intentional. Shout out to like the tribe marriages. Um, when I hear them speak, they were very intentional. Right. There's yeah. there should be some foundational things that are like uh, uh, that are influenced by kingdom. Right. That we say this is what I'm looking for in a mate. And then everything outside that should be like a preference. These are the things I need, but these are the things I want, right? You were speaking earlier. I wanted a six four. Yeah. I had it. Somebody six four. 
I'm reformed. That's how tall, how tall you should keep. That's, that's not the point. But they always, it always be the that's shortest the women that want the tallest guy. I wanted what I wanted. And I probably put a little too much importance on it where I might have thought it was a need at one point, right? She, you don't need no six four. Sit down. Now I'm okay because I'm like, I can't even slow dance with him, right? I'm gonna have to be on my tippy toes. He got to bend over. We can't kiss. I'm like, you know, God woke me up and gave me wisdom. I truly believe. But <laughs> it's oh, really, it's sad. It's the way I think. I'm like, girl, what? But I had had it, and you know, like me. But um, no, really, I I think like if we just sit down and say, okay, these are foundational things. These are non-negotiables. These are things we need. Then we can go off that. Right. Versus when you're single, you can keep adding to the list more and more and more and more. But there's some natural um, consequences that come with it. If you have peace with it, um, then cool. But I think if we don't address these things, we don't think about it. Right. It's, It's not a thought. Until yeah. reality comes to your front door and you're like, man, I wish I would have had that in the front of my mind before I would have moved different. Yeah. I would have been more intentional. Maybe that healing would have been sped up a little more. Maybe you would have went and got a therapist. Maybe yeah. you cried some more, journal some more, address some. I don't know, but yeah. we would have been a little more intentional. So yeah. so those, those are real, um, real effects. But again, yeah. I don't want that to be looked no, at easily, but just I- aware. I don't want people, and this is where I always say we shy away from, we're dealing with adults. Mm-hmm. We, we, we have a tendency not to talk about the negative because we're fear that it will discourage. Mm-hmm. But the very thing, I don't want people ever be driven by fear. I want them to be driven by facts. Mm-hmm. This, Absolutely, that, yes. So when you're dealing with it, it don't catch you off guard. So then you say, oh, well, if this is a situation I can deal with, then like I, I saw in the chat where people said, well, maybe... They said, I believe that every Christian should go see a sex therapist before they get married. Mm-hmm. See, that's another thing to say, OK, I recognize that if I am abstaining like this for a long period of time, I'm out of service. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't I don't know what to do. It's been mm-hmm. 20 years. It's been 15 yes. years. We're going to a marriage counselor. Why not also talk about this and talk mm-hmm. about what do we see as a healthy frequency in our marriage? Because if you're, not, if you're not talking about this stuff, then it will show up and it could be the very foxes that destroy the vine of marriage. Mm. And then you got to say, OK, now, listen, what do you think? What do you think? You got men that may say, I don't believe in going down on a woman. You may have a wife that says, I don't believe in going down on a man, but he believes in going this or whatever. But y'all didn't talk about it. Y'all yeah. sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, about to get married and haven't even had a conversation with mm-hmm. the other person. Feel like, hold on now. Uh, hold on, you don't want to do that with me? He's like, nah, that's nasty. That's not lady like. That's nasty. Then you ain't, you ain't talked about it. Now you dealing with issues in your marriage frequency. Literally sitting there, I remember with my ex wife, and and I'm very transparent about this. I remember my ex wife told me. She said, "Listen, when we get married, I don't want you thinking our marriage is gonna be based on sex." I said, "Of course it ain't gonna be. Right. <laughs> what got to be based on it. I don't even know what you're talking about. It's, of course it's not." But I didn't have the reference to ask, what do you mean by that? Yeah, because what does well, that What would be a healthy frequency? What are you yeah. afraid of? Are you feeling like you don't want to be, uh, um, um, what's the word? Objectified. Objectified. That's the word mm-hmm. I'm looking for. That, I, that, that you're objectified and I'm just looking at you for this. Is that what you're afraid of? Right. And are you safeguarding what frequency is? And you're saying that. I believe that healthy is, and to be honest with you, in the all transparency, the frequency first year of my marriage was one every 10 days. Mm. Now, my brain was saying, I believe healthy should be a minimum of three times a week. I'm 28 years old, minimum. And so I'm talking to her, and I never, ever had the conversation. I just looked out, it was played out. And anytime I would try, she's like, oh, I feel like, well, this is this. Well, you know, this, well, no, I just... And it ended up being on an average once every 10 days. Mm. But no one of neither one of us are having that discussion about all that. That's the reason why I said I'm I'm, I'm doing this program next month that's going to teach how to vet properly. Mm. So we're sitting up here talking about. So now here I am. Now I'm feeling like, well, maybe I am. Oh, and then she also said this prior to marriage. I believe you have an unhealthy view of. What would you say? Having relations. relations. Yeah, having relations. I feel like <laughs> they have an unhealthy view of having relations. I said, "What?" I never said. What do you mean by that? Mm-hmm. I never. I never watched the pee. I mm-hmm. never ever did threesomes. I never did none of this stuff. 
So what's unhealthy? I didn't go to the, the, the club where the women take off their clothes. That wasn't a part of my lifestyle. Give me one person, we can rock out. That's all yeah. I care about. But you're telling me as my soon to be bride that I have an unhealthy view of having relations. Mm. What does that mean? Yeah. So, so then we get married. I feel like I'm my needs aren't being met. And then what happened was I resort for the very first time ever in my mm -hmm. life. I started doing the P. Well, the M. Watching, watching the P, engaging in the M. Which one? Let's hear. It's all of it. P, I had enough in my head. Okay. I had enough stories and relived experiences in my I had okay. lived experience in my head. I can just regurgitate a moment in thought and I can do whatever I need to do to that. Mm -hmm. But it was the first time ever in my life that I started doing the M. Mm, wow. Time. Never did it ever in my life until I got married. I was going to write a book that said I started Ming once I got married. But mm. she would know, that probably hurt her feelings. So I never did do that. And so, but the reality was, and then what happened, um, and I'll share the story since we're talking about this. Mm. I, I said, so I'll just take care of myself. And so I started doing that. Now think about that. To be married yeah. in a, the ideology, I'm going to take care of myself. So now I'm taking care of myself. I take the uh, the the lubrication that that we will use. I take it to the shower with me. I do what I do. I leave one day. I forgot to remove it out the shower. I leave. I said, "Oh my God, she gonna see that? She gonna? Oh my God, that's gonna be a whole problem." So I thought. I came home later on that evening. I noticed it had moved from the shower to the nightstand, and I said, "All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room." I said, I see you move the, the lube from the shower. She said, yeah. I said, what do you think about that? She said, well, you got to take care of yourself. Do that. Mm. I said, so you don't think we're newlyweds and you don't feel obligated to do that? Like, well, no, nah, I mean, take care of yourself. Nah, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Then I built up resentment towards her because I'm saying mm. I'm married and I can't even depend on my, my wife to take care of me, to help me out, for us to engage in this beautiful thing that we created. That God, yeah, amen. Then that rejection turned into resentment. Mm. And that resentment started opening up the door and the very, so then at first, when I would, uh, when I would M, I would think about her. But then after I built resentment, I could no longer take care of myself thinking mm -hmm. about her. And so I had to start thinking about recalling memories of the past. Mm -hmm. And then manifest in the very thing, the person that I had been aiming to in real life. I go I to the show and then I see her. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm like, the hey, devil. somebody I had messed around with in the past. We start talking, rekindling. Boom. Now I'm in an adulterous relationship. Mm -mm -mm. And so that's what I mean by as Christians, we have to normalize our desires, our needs and articulate that and mm -hmm. give each other a safe space to have that conversation. Don't think the Holy Spirit is going to magically come in and change it and tell your spouse this. It's your responsibility to say, these are how you meet my needs. Now, the part of selfishness that I want to say uh, in defense for her is that, and I, I call it the feather story, is that she came home one day with a feather in the first year of marriage. She came home with a feather and she brought it. She said, hey, I want you to use this on me. And I was just like, oh, God, I'm already frustrated because I'm going, here we are. You make it so complicated for us to do this. And now you bring a feather. My immaturity, I get the feather. I'm rubbing it on her body. I'm like, this is so stupid. Mm -hmm. you can feel that from somebody that I'm mm -hmm. sitting there doing this to you. So you like, I'm trying to, I want him to make love to me in this moment. And he half hazardly doing it. She's not saying this, but I know she can feel that energy. Mm -hmm. I do whatever that is. And then we, we make love or whatnot. But God reminded me of that selfish moment. Seven, six years after I got divorced, I was minding my own business and I always try to reverse engineer stuff. I go, what could I have done as a husband to create safety in my marriage to get the quote unquote freak out of my wife? Mm, just, okay, I, now, okay. I, I, I want to, I wanted to cultivate the freak out of my wife. Mm. And I do a good job stewarding that. God said, no, you didn't. I said, wow, what could I have done? He said, remember that time she brought that feather? I said, yeah. How'd you feel about that? I mean, I felt like she was, she was making another obstacle. She was making it difficult. He said, because you made it about you. It was about her in that moment. You're supposed to serve. You're supposed to, you're supposed to cover her. You're supposed to give her what she needs. You didn't do that. And that's why you always felt like she couldn't meet your needs because you were leading from a place mm. of selfishness. And I said, 
Oh my God. In my bedroom right now, my new house I bought, I have a feather chandelier in my bedroom to remind me to not be selfish in the bedroom. <laughs> whoever my wife is. I don't know how I feel about that. You tell me the feather story. I'm like, take that feather fan. No, you won't because you're going to get the benefits of that. No, okay. Yeah, yeah, come back. Come back. Yeah. Say my wife is going to have a problem with that when she gets the healed, redeemed. Bye. Birth. Bye. Um, no, but this is good though. Um, I think we have to retrain our minds to understand that we can have these conversations and it don't be lustful, right? Uh, we Huh? I said 100%. Yeah, we can have those conversations with like if you're uh, going to a therapist, if it's, you know, uh, in premarital counseling, if you're like, oh, well, I just don't want to have it between me and him because maybe then get a third party. But I do think it is beneficial to your marriage to have all these conversations yeah. um, beforehand. So, yeah. okay. Amen. So, so yeah, what we talked about, like, I like that you said, like, uh, you want them to have the facts, right? Because I don't, again, want people to be discouraged or fearful, but just aware, huh? They ain't, they ain't discouraged. Amen. Comments, they, they, they happy to feel liberated. Oh, okay. Amen. I just want to be intentional, especially um, the women out there, because some of these men be hemming and hawing, and I'm like, okay, y'all, listen, we... We cute. We may look young, but hey, hey, okay, that black don't crack or have us messed up. Okay, don't let that mirror fool you. Them, them, him and Han. The him, and, him and Han, right. Because like you said, there's biological things that a man doesn't have to worry about. I'm glad that you brought up like the erectile dysfunction and yeah. all that. Maybe they'll start, you know, waking up a little bit. But for women, if you do have a desire for children, we know that God can do all things. And I've seen yeah. it in my family, but it's like, if we're aware of something, why not do our best to avoid it? Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, just being intentional with that. Okay. So we were talking about like when the weight becomes a weight, W A I T to W E I G H T. Um, yeah. do you think things like that women being aware, okay, I have a biological clock. Um, men now being aware that even, even them saying like with age, like, um, men peak at a certain age, right? They're prime, right? This is the best you, this age, this age, right? Yeah. Um, do you think when we start thinking about that, that's when the weight becomes a weight? Or I can just ask you, when do you think it it changes from, hey, I'm just waiting, I, I got peace, I'm content, amen, the Lord got me, and then all of a sudden now it starts feeling like a weight, something that's weighing you down. What do you think makes it transition from one to the next. When you start questioning the purpose of why you're abstaining to begin with. Because when I look at myself, I said that, think about it, when I talked about the real life thing about me feeling like, you know, wow, I don't feel like, I feel like I may be struggling with an ED. Mm -hmm. And I had to reclaim my ego by saying, let me see and let me perform. And I said, oh, I'm good. But, mm -hmm. but it was very psychological with me. It was a real thing. I was nervous. And I didn't just feel that one moment and say, let me go do this the next day. It was played out. And I was just like, I start reading stuff. I'm reading, I'm reading all this stuff. And they say, well, you 40, you finna start struggling with this. I say, oh my God, most men, this and all this. And then you reading about the effects of alcohol. I never even drank alcohol, but they say, you <laughs> alcohol, that can start affecting you later on. If you did, I, I'm, I'm, I'm self-diagnosing myself. <laughs> Lord Jesus, baby. you don't drink the tears. That's not reason why. Well, why? I, I, I'm not waking up with an erection. Then I start reading stuff about the need for testosterone. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm reading stuff about uh, uh, what will also help with it with sea moss and making sure that you have a regular exercise and you will find other ways to get more your blood pumping to get testosterone, all that stuff. These are real things that I had to start researching. But the reality was it was feeding a deep insecurity in me that I was abstaining. It was going to backfire on me once mm. I got there. Because the truth be told, I start seeing in these social media streets where women were talking about, let's keep it real. Women were sitting up here saying, listen, a lot of you men, y'all in y'all 40s, y'all can't perform. Y'all struggle with erectile dysfunction. Oh, You're seeing no, this on social media streets. Then I would hear women say to me, listen, I know you abstinent or whatever. But there is no way if you and I get together that I ain't finna test that out first. Yeah. Because I will not be displeased being married and you can't take care of me. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, here I am trying to do right for the first time in my right. life. And now you're over here <laughs> for the first time in my life in this area. And then you're telling me, 
no, nah, I'm too old for that. Mm. And, and and I and, and I welcome the honesty or transparency. If a woman says, I'm going to be honest with you, there's no way that I could be married to a man that I'm not pleased with, with in our in the in the area of relations It's not going to happen. So I'm going to have to test it out. Most mm. times her, men say that I got to test drive the car before I buy it. Yeah, no, I'm hearing women telling me that mm -hmm. four years. Listen, now nah, I'm sorry. We too old for it. At this big age. Right, right, right. At this big age, ain't no way I'm going to go marry somebody. And we, we and I'm stuck with you for the rest of my life. Stuck with you for the rest wow. of my life. Wow. Yeah. I'm hearing that language. Technology. I, I, there's no way I'm going to marry a man that's intentional, that's a God fearing man, that's disciplined in this area. Huh. Of, of, of having this that that can provide for me financially, mostly mentally, uh, and because the 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 relations part, I'm Let not here, and I ain't gonna be stuck with you for the rest of my life. Latiris, when I say I and still am, but was so naive, I could not wrap my mind around when people would say, "Shki, you're waiting till you get married. What if you get married and and it's bad, or if it's little and it's all these things?" And I'm like, "Well, we just work it out, right? Like just." You know, and I was like, so reversing it. I'm like, so you mean to tell me you meet a man, you're yeah. in love. He's all the things you wouldn't go to the altar unless you got to test drive it or try it out. Yeah. Then if you try it out and it's not what you uh, desire. want or desire, you scrap the whole man. Yeah. This is a man that you were saying. I'll, I'll, I'll do, I will, I do right with him. Yeah. I, I, I do. Right. But before I do, I got to yeah. make sure that the relations is good. I want to make, sure, make sure that God is accurate. And when he told me this is my husband, I want to make sure that he's my husband. Lies. Testing this out. That it's lust. That's why I look at, I got a shirt. Ain't no test driving this. Right. I love, no, no. Listen, I got a shirt. Ain't I created it? Ain't no test driving this because you hear it. So I got a test drive. I got well, baby, ain't no test driving this. <laughs> so what? 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 What, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. You. Know, I read this study about Tesla when Tesla first um came out. They didn't let you test drive it. They didn't. You had you had to buy it, right? You yeah. had to invest. So if Tesla's saying ain't no test driving because this is a quality car, one of value. We know that it holds so much value that we know y'all gonna buy it without test driving. Yeah. Y'all ain't about to come up here uh, taking joy rides and have a little fun, take little pictures and showing it off. And then you're not about to invest. Yeah. And wait, no, no, yeah. no. And when the person said they was like, you know, there was pushback, but it was like, no, people will buy it. And they did. And they did. I, I, I had a video on it. I knew all the stats or whatever, but they, they bought it at high numbers. Yeah. Same mentality, y'all. Right. So. Mm -mm. Okay, so that's real, right? So that can become a weight. Now, <laughs> somebody put a comment. They was like, "Definitely, you, 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 you couldn't been talking to Christian women." I beg to differ. Christian women. Mm. See, people think that when people are quote unquote transparent and they're saying something that may be ungodly in that moment, that that disqualifies them as being Christian. Mm -hmm. The reality is, Christians are engaging in relations mm -hmm. so what, can it be plausible that them same people when you dealing with them and they say listen i need to test drive it before we get married christian love the lord tithe the tithe everything else but they're saying listen this is where i am as an adult as a woman i have had my experiences with whatever or read whatever or whatever it is the weight of whatever that is mm -hmm. i'll be dang if i get married to somebody and then I be stuck with them and mm -hmm. I haven't gotten that. And that's what I want to address because a lot of people are like, well, that must be a worldly woman. No, that these these Christian people that think that's why I said we have a, we have this world has influenced us in so many areas that we've had a tendency to when the Bible says be in this world, but not of it. We're mm -hmm. more of the world than anything mm -hmm. just by frame of reference that as Christians, we've adopted these mentalities where God is just not good enough anymore. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and let me, let me just speak to that. Latiris. Um, I love that they brought it up because then people can unpack it even more. So what, well, they say they're not a Christian, they say they're a Christian, but they're not a true Christian. I know we can go down that rabbit hole, but let me just say this, even being exposed to um, hearing stuff like that can, can weigh on you. Right. So you can be uh, talking to men that identifies a Christian and then they say that, right? You may say, okay, 
you know, more power to you. But if you repeatedly keep hearing that, it can start the way on you, right? Yeah. If, a, if a woman is at an age where now she's trying to figure out, you know, can she have children or not? You don't even need to hear a Christian man say that. You can just keep hearing it in the world. I've heard it on podcasts, right? Yeah. Talk about I wouldn't date a woman this age because I want children. That that affects you. Yeah. Right? That, that can. I get what she's saying, but it's like just them hearing it, it coming into your ear gate. Yeah. It can affect you. It now makes you aware, right? If if a woman keeps saying, ain't no way I'm marrying no man, or, or or them saying, oh, a man at a certain age, he can't put in no work. A man at a certain age, he can't put in no work. You keep hearing it. You're like, well, I'm a man of a certain age. Can I, <laughs> can I put in some work, right? <laughs> like, and, and now you're like, okay, Lord, I'm getting a little nervous. I'm getting a little nervous, Lord. It's feeling like a weight, right? So just, that's yeah. why it says like, uh, protect what you hear, what you watch, what you listen to, right? But there's some things we can't help, but it comes in. Somebody yeah. said you can set up some safeguards, but we live in a world where you hear stuff, you yeah. see stuff, yeah. you know. So I hear what she's saying. Yeah. Let's um set set up safeguards, but you can your coworker can plant seeds, right? That can now start making you feel like it's a weight now. It, it, it's it's yeah. something heavy that I'm carrying. Um, so I love that you said that we touched on um, the woman, right? Coming up a certain age, you done touched on uh, ED. And I do think those effects can start making it feel like a weight and make it harder for you to um, wait in peace and in contentment. Am I saying that it's not doable? Absolutely not, y'all. Yeah. I am she. Super content, right? Super, yeah. super, honestly, maybe a little too content. Um but I do, I just think there needs to be an awareness. Um, and if, if now you're, it's shifting from, I used to have peace and I used to be content with it. And now it's feeling like a burden, you upset and, and you ain't waiting well, let's figure out what shifted that way, right? Like what went from you having peace and waiting well, and now you're frustrated, like Harris said earlier. <laughs> What's the word? Frustration. <laughs> And the frustration isn't just about the fact of the abstinence journey. It's about the fact of not being married. I want, mm. I do intentional things to prepare for my wife. Like I literally, like, like I talked earlier, I went and bought this house in August uh, to prepare for my wife. I said, Aww. I got to go prepare a place for her. So mm. I went and bought this house to be like, all right, here it is. I want to just always leave with intention, even without her being present. So that she knows that the decisions I made in her absence were made with her in her mind. mind. Yeah, it's in like I gotta always think like that. You know what I'm in saying? Mind. Other than that, then I'm 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 saying I want a wife, and then I meet her tomorrow, and I'm not prepared for. Her. The Bible says I go to prepare a place for you. So as a husband, I believe that before we even become a husband, we operate as a husband, and we go to prepare a place for our wife. When I meet mine, I'm gonna say, "Where the place at? Would you what you done prepared?" What is prepared? Where is the place? Where is you bringing me? Where is we going? Lord, if you listen to this, sir, prepare. prepare. That's what I'm saying. I'm 40. I turned 46 on the March, March of 29th. Oh. I got something to prepare for. Amen. You know, or I'm just sitting up here doing a podcast every week, writing letters to it. And then you look at my personal <laughs> life. I ain't, I ain't got no room for it. I ain't got mm -hmm. time for it. I ain't got a place to take her to. I ain't got, I ain't got, I ain't got nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I do it with that intent, with that intentionality, so that she'll feel like, you know what, you you you've waited and prepared for me. That'd be Amen. the greatest. Comp that's the greatest compliment I'll ever receive from. Him. All right, now Latares, calm down. Now he really laying it on thick. Okay, because time is coming, coming uh, up. A uh, couple more things quickly. What <laughs> is uh, one thing that we can do when the weight becomes a weight? What is one thing you can do, or what have you done? I'll, I'll address it. I'll address mm -hmm. what makes me feel this way. Amen. I don't, I don't Amen. Code it. I don't try to be like, I'm going to pray it away. No, I sit in it. Letaris, mm -hmm. you feel this right here. You feel this, 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 this relationship that you thought was going to um, um, materialize to marriage didn't happen. How do you feel like that? Now you, you had a deadline in your mind. You were abstinent with this woman. You said that on September the 23rd, your abstinence journey, the wait is over. You found your person is this. Now you're back in the market. How do you deal with that again? I be present in my thoughts, present in my emotions, and I have real conversations with God. To be like, God, there we go. what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. what, are we, what are we doing here? Because I didn't, I didn't see this coming. And I yeah. feel like 
this and this, this, this. I even had a conversation with God and I told him, I said, don't you dare do this. Because a lot of people was telling me, you know, you get people that influence you. Maybe God has you single because you can help more people right now. <laughs> You have this amazing podcast, and look how I many marriages you are helping. Look how I many singles you are helping. Maybe uh -huh. this is this. Maybe make, think about it. Maybe uh -huh. that's why God has you this. And I'd be like, I rebuke you. Because <laughs> the reality is, if you're saying that, and then I say, God, I'll be like, now, God, I understand single seasons. Adam mm -hmm. had one. But the reality is, since I don't know the time when I'll get married, and I, every year I always say, I'm going to be married this year. I say it every year. This year, I said, I'm going to be married this year. No prospect in sight. I'm getting married this year. Mm. I keep saying that because if I stop saying it, there lies the problem. Oh, Because if I start saying, hopeful. I'm, I'm in these streets. Like, if I now start, come snatch you out. Get up the Get up the street. Get your back in this house. Right, get in the house right now. <laughs> get out these streets. <laughs> uh, and the reality is because I got to always keep the main thing, the main thing. I always said to myself, I said that um, the longer I stay single with a platform like mine, talking about uh, desiring my future wifey, the mm -hmm. more I feel to myself that I'm unsuccessful in my journey. Oof. And I, and once it reaches a certain point, it becomes a joke, to be honest with you. That's mm -hmm. what I tell God, I said, God, don't you be having me out here looking like no joke. Mm hmm they assume the terrorists don't want nobody. I so, asked you that when we first went out to lunch. I said, Terrence, you really want to be married? 100%. You but you can assume that based upon, I had one of my friends call me last week and said, I've seen, this is the woman said, I've seen some amazing women sit on that yellow couch. You tell me you ain't never tried to holler at them. I said, yes, I have. Yes, I do. <laughs> I mean, that friend like, Terrence, you ain't talk? You think I'm blind? Yes, I do. Yes, I talk to them. I'm yes. single. They single. We gonna talk. Mm -hmm. So I, I said, but it just don't work out or whatever it is. It just don't take off to that point or just whatever. They may be into dating somebody else that they're yeah. in the process of dating somebody. It just hasn't happened yet. But I always say to myself is that the longer I stay single, it's the weight of it, especially with the platform that I have. Yeah, that it's me wanting my wife. It's me mm -hmm. on my journey as I discover, uncover, recover love. If I never recover love, then it's like. All right, Latares, you 55 years old. Time. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Right? right? No, no. We've been doing this for 15 years, y'all. You know what I believe? Y'all be like, boy, sit down somewhere. You know right. what I'm saying? It becomes to be a joke. So I have real conversations with God about that. Amen. And that's where I'm getting weary in my well-doing. I tell God that. There we I'll go. Say, God, listen, I'm feeling like this. Like, let's talk to me. Let's let's have this moment. Let's do this. I'll go into a worship moment. A lot of things, a lot of things. What, what becomes very soothing to my soul is worship. That's my way of not only decompressing, but always, uh, but also rising up to another level. I'll be like, I'll just start turning on worship songs and I'll just play my, 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 my YouTube playlist of worship songs and I'll just be worshiping. And then after and I go to my worship, I'll be like, oh, I'm good. And that thing, no, I can <laughs> live to fight another day. Amen. But, let, let me tell you, for the sake of time, let's hear I know we could do this all night. That's the truth. For the sake of time, give me one advantage to waiting long. One. We talk about the disadvantages, the negative effects. What's an advantage? It's discipline to be literally, there will be seasons in your life to where, well, whoever you get married, and they talk about that, is that it's going to be a season in your life to where your wife may not be able to say uh, menopause. People deal with menopause different ways. That she may not be able to She's not wanting you like that. Y'all have a kid. She's not wanting you to touch her and, and, and make love to her after she done had a kid. Mm. But if you're disciplined in that area, you go, man, I've waited a month, two months on she's had a kid. I can wait three months of not doing this. And yeah. I, I realize she's going to postpartum depression. I ain't got to go step outside of my marriage to get my knees met. I've had people on my podcast that talked about that, but you had to exercise that. What you practice in your single life, you will perfect in your marriage. Come on. And Come so on. what happens is, is that if you can lead with discipline in your single life, when you're married, you can add another layer of protection, another Amen. layer of covering, because your wife may be looking at you or her husband be looking at you and be like, I, I know you're probably going to cheat on me because I haven't been showing you. Like, I will never cheat on you. Baby, I, that, these two Maybe months, I didn't, yeah. I cover you, girl. I love, you're not 
I don't see you as just your vagina. I see you as my wife. Mm -hmm. I see you as my purpose partner. I love you. And I know that due to hormonal issues, due to health situations, I've talked to people that's been on my podcast that have physical health complications where they couldn't. I had the old, uh, the, the lady Rita, bad girl Riri, 504, lady, uh, older lady that was talking about, she was struggling with endometrial cancer, could not perform, mm. was a bunny rabbit when she first got married. And then she went through the stage at 27, 28. And she said, I felt so bad. I couldn't give this to my husband, Wow! but her husband covered her in that moment, you know? And so the beautiful thing about it is to be able to cover our spouses in the moments where our flesh isn't pleased, mm -hmm. but we can cover them from a spiritual and emotional standpoint. That's the benefit Amen. of that for a long time because- Amen. The Bible says he that beginneth the good work is, uh, is, is performing it to the day of Christ. So whatever that good work that's starting in you as you're going through this journey that you have no control over, typically, especially with women, if you can't make nobody propose to you and you're honoring God and you've been healed and you're going through the process, then God is going to reward that. I always got to believe that God is going to reward those who diligently serve him. And so that's the benefit of it. It's the reward. Oh of peace. Think mm. about that. Not having these, uh, these soul ties that you're trying to break every other week, mm -hmm. you know, twice a year, whatever your, 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 your frequency is with bringing new guys into your bedroom. You are eradicating that because you're saying, listen, I, I ain't going to be sitting at the altar no more about some dude that then got my heart and got my body that didn't deserve it. Right. I ain't gonna be at the altar. No more be getting, uh, trying to break soul ties from different women. I done gave my body to. Amen. So that's that that's a couple of the benefits. Amen. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up, but I want to end with one question. Um, I want you to give advice to those whose weight has turned into a weight. But before that, I gotta give a uh thank you to our sponsors. So start thinking about that. You gotta leave them with something, you know, just no pressure. I'm just playing, I'm just playing the lecture. Um, but okay, a thank you to our sponsors. So the first sponsor is the Sexless Tribe app. It's the number one app making abstinence easier. It connects abstinent Christians with community and abstinence resources. It's free to download and available in all app stores. So the Sexless Tribe app. If you're on Instagram, TikTok, and everything else, if you are abstinent Christian, you need to be on this app. Secondly, a subtle reminder. A subtle reminder is an apparel brand that helps you keep a to help. No. Okay. Let me, let me try again. I blame the terrorists. A subtle reminder is an apparel brand that helps keep you accountable against temptation from t-shirts to jewelry. They have you covered head over to a subtle reminder.com and check out the merchandise. Lastly, I want to give a thank you to our newest channel members who support this podcast financially. Your contributions are needed and appreciated. Now, with that, Lateris is going to close us out. He's going to give us a piece of advice, and then he's going to tell us how we can connect with him, um, you know, across all the platforms. So, Lateris, to the people who are up here and they're like, you know what? I've been I've been abstaining long. I'm staying long. And the weight, W-A-I-T, is now a weight, W-E-I-G-H-T. What advice would you give to them? I'm going to go from the King James Version. Hebrews right. 12, 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed, about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And so it takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of diligence. And we have to make sure that we understand we are in a cloud of witnesses. People, our friends, angels, the, the heavenly hosts are seeing us run this race. And the Bible says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. God knows that God cares about us. And he knows that you care about getting married, those that want to get married. He knows that you care about having a kid. He knows you care about having a healthy, thriving marriage. He knows He knows all your cares. He says, and I love you, cast it all on me. Mm. And, and, and if we understand that heart posture and that position to take all this weight and say, <sighs> I'm not supposed to carry it anymore. I'm not mm -hmm. supposed to be carrying it. This is yours. You told me to cast it on you. Take it. And the, when we look at the word cast, that means to throw fervently. That means that it, it, it's not saying, let me just lay this over. That means get this off of me. And so the minute that the devil tries to put it on us, take it in, understand it, talk to God and throw it on him and continue running your race. There we go. Run your race. 
Run it well, but cast some kids onto the Lord. Amen. Lateris, it was so much fun. And I knew it would be so much fun. Such a great conversation. Um, the people that aren't aware of who you are and they loved you tonight and they're like, I want to stay connected, follow his journey. What is the best way for them to connect with you? To go to YouTube, go to the Dear Future Wifey podcast on YouTube, hit that subscription button and subscribe. We're on our road to hitting 500,000 subscribers. We're about 3,500 away or something like that. I want to hit that by my birthday on the 29th. And so I'm going to be very intentional on telling everybody, go ahead and subscribe. There we go. Amen. All right, LaTerris, it was a pleasure. I'll talk to you soon. You'll be blessed. <sighs> Y'all, that was good. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Amen. Okay, so listen, for the replay watchers, I want to hear your thoughts. So make sure you leave it in the comment section after you watch this video or while you're watching the video. Just, just be in that comment section, leaving your thoughts. To the people that tuned in live, I want to say thank you so much. I truly hope something was shared tonight that will be edifying to you while abstaining. I want to make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video as you head out. And listen, if you really, really enjoy this episode, don't withhold this good thing. I want you to share it out with someone. And remember, as always, it doesn't matter what the world says. It only matters what the word says. So keep pressing towards the mark. God bless you guys.